Hame, hey, our race that slows down the nation. God, I'm excited. Very excited. 50 people mm-hmm. dressed as horses in horse suits. 50 horses. I mean, we might have even more than 50 people, won't we? Because there's going to be some two man horse suits. 50, uh, yeah, 50 horses. Mm-hmm. Or, but I think it's easier to say 50, 50 people, people in horse, horse suits. suits. Yeah. Yes. Um, You're right. Uh, we'll be running around uh, a track. We haven't worked out the exact details, but it's going to be staggered start if you're in a two-man horse suit. It's and- the day before the Melbourne Cup. The Melbourne Cup stops the nation. Mm. We will slow down the nation. Everyone's invited to the race, Ando. Yep. And now it really does... Suits? Tr- wear suits? Oh, yeah. I think we go hardcore racing wear. Yep. As fancy as you can get. We've got... It might, a- be, it might be hot out there, so... There's some you can, shade. You can go some shorts. You can go shorts, but definitely suits. We'd love to see suits from the from the waist, waist up, up, which is a, just a fashion rule that we now have invented, <laughs> and that's exactly what's happening. Here's the thing, though, Ando. It's it's nice. Like the whole spring racing carnival's great. Mm. You know, the Melbourne Cup and it's a big deal. Everyone watches it, but it's very difficult for you to be a horse in the Melbourne mm. Cup. It's not impossible unless you're a horse. And, and yesterday we realised, wouldn't it be fun? Mm. Actually, the day before, sorry, Monday. Wouldn't it be great? We could have people in horse suits as our race. Originally, the race ham was going to have all different types of horses. Yep. Donkeys, mules, um, Clydesdales, stallions. Before we realised, then we got told very clearly that that will not work. Horses don't get along with each other. They'll stampede. They might run into the crowd. If you do have someone in a horse suit in the race, they could trample them. A lot of things that didn't sound great to us. At that point, I think you got your back up a little bit about the fact that horses weren't playing along. You said this. I guess we thought of the race with maybe like a cartoon conception of horses in our head without remembering that these are actual animals with temperaments and things they do and don't do. I'm a different species. We love them as animals, but I mean, I'd have to say right now as team players and as listeners of the show, horses horses are jerks. Horses are jerks. Horses are jerks. Horses are jerks. Now, we've replayed that. Seven times they're using the echo effect. Yeah. You, you Seven times too. Uh, yeah, I did. We, the whole studio didn't stop with me going, ah, oh, jerks. Yeah. Ah, oh, jerks. Ah, <laughs> oh, jerks. Um, you did say that, and that upset, some, upset the some horse, horse community. People. Yep. Now, look, I'm not uh, too big to apologise no. when I know I've done the wrong thing. Um, and if I may, Ando, mm-hmm. could I read an open letter I've written to horses? Oh, I'd love that. No, no, Jack, I'm not typing it. I've done it. <laughs> and I hand wrote it. And that's a romance music. That's romance music. That's like, dear Cyril. <laughs> I miss uh, you, Cyril. old chum. As soon as this dang war's over, I'll be back in your, against your bosom before you know it. No, no, no. Heartfelt. Better. Better. Much better. <laughs> dear horses, yesterday I said something I now regret. I said horses were jerks. Mm-hmm. You're not. Thanks. If anyone's a jerk, I am. A knee jerk. It was a hasty, <laughs> it was a hasty comment yeah. made without thinking about the hurt I would cause to your giant hearts. Mm-hmm. And I'm sorry. That's lovely. What I meant was, I was finding the technicalities of racing a bunch of you together to be difficult to manage from a safety and logistics perspective. That's not your fault. Does that make you nuisances? Yes. But jerks? (laughs) No. And again, (laughs) I'm sorry. However, if you were listening to the show, I think... It's getting quite dramatic, the music there, Jack. However, if you were listening to the show, I think you'll agree that the race we have planned is actually an absolute cracker. Mm. Imagine that. 50 people in one- and two-man horse suits galloping around a track normally used by humans to race you. In that tone, I'd like to extend the carrot of friendship to you. Mm. If you're a horse listening to this and you're willing to forgive me for my comments, I would like to invite you to the race that slows down the nation on Monday, the 2nd of November, in the small rural town of Wedderburn, to come. Not as an animal that we gaze upon and demand excellence from, but as a spectator. That's nice. It would be a nice twist to have real horses watching us, the humans for once, running around for your entertainment. We will have a special area set up for you. Please go to hamishandandy.com or get a human to help you as your hoofs would be no doubt terrible at the keyboard or not even recognised on a smartphone. Your friend, Hamish Blake.
That's nice. For a second, when you said that, um, you know, in the past, it's humans riding them in races. I thought you were going to invite horses to, to ride, <laughs> to ride out Please humans. come along and crush the small spines <laughs> of the animals that have ridden you for so many hundreds of years. <laughs> I think that's really lovely, Ham. I'd like to invite some horses down to watch. Yeah, And they sure. can, for once, they can have a nice day out. We'll have carrots and salt licks. We're going to meet... A few people that the horses may be able to watch. Uh, the first two people chosen as runners, as horses, people inside horse suits for the race that slows down the nation's... Vanda, when we started to scratch the surface and ask the question, hey, anyone got a horse suit? People with horse suits are dying for you to ask that question. Yes. There's a lot of us out there. I put my hand up and say, yes, I've got a horse suit. Used it for last year's Halloween costume. It's, it's a special group. And they want to run, mm. and we're finding out at hamishnady.com that there is a flood of people. There are only 50 horses in this race. We cannot have everyone that registers as a horse. No, we're going run. to run. We welcome you. We encourage you to come along as a spectator, but you must understand that to be a horse, you must be registered. It's sort of that's the one similarity we do have with the Melbourne Cup. Yep. No walk up horses on the day. <laughs> you must qualify. The first person, Ham, to qualify after an amazing registration. Yep is Matthew. He joins us now. Congratulations, Matthew. Thanks very much, boys. Um, this is huge, Matt. You're the very first person to qualify as a horse for the race. Uh, do you want to tell everyone a bit about your horse suit? Uh, yeah, my horse is called Harry, the horse. Yep, cool. um, Yeah, he's actually um, the Billabong Ranch mascot, so that's our family business. Oh, okay. great. Um, okay, yeah, well, it yeah, because looked, it's a very good quality one. It looked very high quality. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, he's, he's a proper mascot horse. Um, yeah, so. Thoroughbred. Uh, yeah, more like Clyde Cross. <laughs> yeah, okay. sorry, purebred. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> more of a uh, good comes from good lineage because his mane looks shiny. You, you, you've got one of my favourite types of horse suit, which is where you're looking out from the neck under mm. the horse's yep. chin and a full head. Yep. So you've got the, the full head and the full neck, and that's going to be more difficult to run in. But I love it because it will look a lot better. Yeah, yeah, it is quite hard to see out of actually. Um, yeah, one uh, last year I competed in um, like we've got a Brumby run out here, and yeah, I competed in that and did a few obstacles in that. Um, and yeah, it was quite hard to actually do that. In, in, in the, the suit, so you've got so you've horse, run in the suit before horse running. Yeah, yeah, experience. I did. <laughs> how many how many horses in that race? How many people in horse suits? Uh, I was the only one. Yeah, uh, okay, good, great. Good, well, good. so do you reckon with fifty people running as horses, we might be on track for a world record here? Oh, uh, I hope so. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, that's good. Well, I mean, I like that. Do you, how do you reckon you go with 800 metres? Because it's a fairly long way around the track. Well, um, the Brumby runs about 12 k, so if I can do that, I can definitely do <laughs> yeah, this. She's going to be sprinting <laughs> My this. worry for you, Matthew, just off the bat, is yours looks like a hot horse suit. And, uh, and we'll put it up at hamishnee.com or on our socials, Ham, but the, the wonderful picture of you talking to real horses, Matthew, yep. inside your horse suit. The, the real horses obviously believe that they're talking to another horse. They don't seem phased at all. Is it a hot suit, Matthew? Uh, only on when it gets up over 35 degrees, it starts getting a bit warm. But, um, yeah, normally put ice packs in that in it, and it keeps it nice and cold. Oh, you're well a professional. Done. Well done, I'm so Matthew. glad we've got a professional as our yes. first horse. And uh, we've got time to reward another horse yeah, yeah. spot. Chris, Chris Wright. Congratulations, Chris. Ahoy, boys. Thank you. Ahoy, Chris. And congratulations. You're now the second horse out of a field of 50 that's been selected to run. Uh, talk us through your horse outfit, Chris. I love it. Um, well, it's uh, it's inflatable, Which so that's, uh, that's on the plus side for me. Yep. Yeah, that's going to be light. It's going to be easy to run in. Um, yeah. Now, I'm just actually looking now. I've got a picture of it in front of me here. It's one of the ones where there's your real legs go into the horse's back legs. There's some little fake jockey legs hanging over the side. So it looks Correct. like you're riding a horse that's rearing up. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, good. Yeah. And now you've got a moustache on and an inflatable hat. No, no, I think that's no, legitimate uh, Mexican hat hand. Oh, right, I thought it was a plastic inflatable <laughs> sombrero. It is plastic, though. Yeah. Um, real moustache? Surely not. It's massive. Oh, no, no. Chris, uh, you're can I have... demand you wear the moustache, Chris? Oh, I've got to find it again. I I'm demanding. <laughs> See Chris, go, it's Chris. a demand from one of the stewards. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Chris, because if you're running with such a light horse, yeah. I need something to create more drag on your face <laughs> to make it a fair race. Also, just I'll so people, one up. people can identify him. That'd be nice. Yeah. Uh, Chris, yeah. you're going to be coming from South Australia, I understand? Correct, yeah. You're going to be heading across to Victoria. Do you see yourself getting there a day early to acclimatise or getting up early and getting there? The race, we think, will be around 5 o'clock in the afternoon, but we think we'd, we'd want all horses there, you know, before noon, I would say, Ham. 
Yeah, I'll probably get up early, yep. nice and early, yep. and that way I'm, I'll, I'll climatise it on the way over, I guess. <laughs> yeah, Look, sure. We're encouraging people to get into the town on the Sunday, mm. sort of stake out your camping spots, yeah. you, where the, the caravan park, the hotel, the motel, wherever mm. you're staying, mm. and get into the mood because, yep. I mean, whilst <laughs> we have got nothing planned, yeah. <laughs> we just assume the mood will be electric in <laughs> the town over the weekend. It'd just be nice to triple the population for them. Chris, um, I can't stress enough that there is nothing planned for the Sunday night, but <laughs> yeah. you know, you know and I might be loosely at the pub. <laughs> um, uh, Chris, congratulations. Uh, good luck. Think about uh, someone you want to bring as a trainer. We're going to allow every horse to have a trainer with them. So, um, sorry, I will ask one last question, though, Chris. Uh, since you're in a one-man horse suit, that means you have to run the full 800 metres of the track. Hmm. How are you feeling confidence-wise of doing a fast 800 in a horse suit? Sorry. Yeah. He's gone. He's, he's left already. Yeah. He's left. Oh, sorry. You're back. You're back, Chris. Oh, lost you for a second then. What yeah. was that? Um, we just, I think it's the perfect <laughs> answer, to be honest. We're talking about how confident you might be running 800 metres in a horse suit. I'm. Um, I'm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <We're not> thinking- <laughs> Sorry, Chris. Uh, you've got all the time in the world. We do have to move on. <laughs> <laughs> we will see you there at Wedderburn. The details are at hamishnady.com. If you also want to run as a horse, you must own or hire a horse suit. We don't have a two man one yet. Hamish Nandy. <laughs> the race that slows down the nation. The People's Cup. <sighs> Thank you for blowing your trumpet. It's always my pleasure. Um, in the rural town... I never make a mistake. An hour from the New South Wales border, not far from the South Australian border as well, Ham, yep. in uh, Victoria. I think uh, we're looking at northwestern Victoria, the small town of Wedderburn, is where we're going to hold, hold the race that slows down the nation. We've got the mayor on side, we've yep. got the townsfolk on side, we have the track. It's ours for the day, we've got the lease on, it's ours for the weekend, though. Yep, we'll do the show from there. Anyone can come and watch the race that slows down the nation. Obviously, in suit, racewear would be nice. Racewear is lovely, unless you're a horse. In yep. which case, if you're registering as a horse, you need to have a horse suit. You need to have a horse costume. Yep. One man is acceptable, Mm. Uh, two man is the preferred traditional style of horse suit, Mm. and we will certainly- Not just pyjamas. No, we're just saying they're off here. Don't enter if you've just got a onesie that's sort of fun to wear at sleepovers. Okay? (laughs) It has to be a costume. It has to be a horse costume. It has to be- It it has to be Halloween standard, not pyjamas. Yep. Or pantomime standard. Pantomime standard. Not floppy, though. Really, ideally, we're looking for mascot standard horse outfits, because we're going to have 50 Horses, 50 people in horse suits yep. um, running around, whether one or two man horse suits, mm. running around this rural country track. It's going to be the greatest sporting event of the year. Yep. And we want it to be of a very high standard of horse outfit. One thing that we're excited about as well is we're going to have only one VIP marquee mm-hmm. where uh, celebrities that or people that look like celebrities are going to be there. Well, because it's loosely based, this event off the Melbourne Cup, we have mm. to acknowledge them. Um, they've got, they make a big deal of their day and they've got your, your Jennifer Hawkinses and whatnot. Kim Kardashian came out one year. Did she really? Yeah. Good yeah. get. Yeah. <laughs> Snoop has been a few times, I yep. think. Yep. I think we went one year, Ando and saw. Kate Upton was there one there's year. Kate Upton. There. There's yep. another Kate that came, named briefly escapes me, but you'd know it if I said it. <laughs> <laughs> Bosworth. Okay, Bosworth. Bosworth was there looking I good. I do know when you yeah, said yeah. That. yeah, one of the Kates, one of the famous Kates. So, look, they've got their celebs and bully for them. Yeah. They, they, they dump a lot of cash on celebrities. It's no secret yep, that yep. it's hundreds of thousands of dollars to get someone to come out for the races. And we're going to dump- And it's lovely, and it's a great day, and everyone goes, you know, you hang around outside the VIP area, and you look in, and you go, oh, there's one of the Kates. There's, that's yep. great. Yep. That's good true. they got them. Yeah, the younger Osborne girl. What's her name? And uh, so it's a great day. <laughs> it's a really fun day. Yeah, out yeah. there. Was Ozzy Osbourne's girl, uh, his daughter's name. You asking me what's Ozzy Osbourne's? So what's his name? What's, she was what's there. the daughter's name? Yeah. Kelly. It's Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> I just wasn't clear on the question, but I knew it immediately. <laughs> Slow yeah, she was in <laughs> she I'm was just there. asking. I was clarifying the question. <laughs> she was there one year. She was there. Okay. <laughs> Everyone knows they get huge names at the Melbourne Cup, and it's racing royalty. Yeah. Everyone's like, oh, it's what a big day. And so we want uh, one marquee full of people that could be perceived to be celebrities if you were <laughs> seeing them from across the room. That's why we need lookalikes. One guy called Lockie rang up recently, oh. Ham, and he had Stop. a... Started the whole trend. Yeah, absolutely. I would love to come to the race that slows down a nation. Yep. We've got a group of mates. We reckon we can add to their celebrity lookalikes. Oh, <laughs> who could you bring? 
Oh, I could bring Bradley Cooper, Arnold Schwarzenegger, uh, Kramer from Friends. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> Kramer from Friends. <laughs> Don't remember the crossover episode between Friends and Seinfeld. <laughs> Kramer from Seinfeld. Oh, like... Kramer from Seinfeld. No, no, no. I love it, Lucky. <laughs> Schwarzenegger's tough. I mean, is he big? I mean, Schwarzenegger yeah, was course, missed. Yeah, hey, we wouldn't bring a small Schwarzenegger. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm glad they wouldn't bring a small Schwartz. It's hard to say small Schwartz. Yeah. <laughs> Don't bring a small Schwartz because the only way into the VIP tent full of lookalikes is, I think at the moment the idea is we're going to stand at the front mm. and you're not allowed to say who you are necessarily. No. But if we can pick who you are, yep. you're allowed in the tent because you're enough of a lookalike. Now, yeah, can I be clear? we're not going to go like, oh, I'm a thin Schwarzenegger. No, no. Well, that's not a real person. <laughs> can I be clear, though? It's like you can't. I'm a thin Pavarotti. You are still Buzz in, off, mate. You are just an Italian guy with a beard. <laughs> you are still in race wear. If you rock up yep. as the Terminator, like <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's obvious by your outfit, or you know, Edward Scissorhands or something. Excellent clarification. You are not. You are not a lookalike. No, we don't want the two swords version no. of you in your most iconic dress. You yeah. can't come as the queen in a royal outfit. No. Come as the queen in race wear. Yes. And, and, we'll- if, and then if you rock up to the front of the marquee and we go, oh, the queen, come oh, in. I'll tell you an amazing one would be, <laughs> oh, Peter Parker, not in the Spider-Man outfit. And we've identified you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> that would be incredible. <laughs> well, Toby Maguire. Yeah, do we, I mean- that would be hard. Yeah. A Toby but, Maguire would be hard. Because <laughs> but, but we might have people out there that look like Toby Maguire. Toby Maguire, full credit to you. Well, why is, is Toby Maguire harder than Bradley Cooper? I just feel like he's a pretty normal looking guy. <laughs> <laughs> like Schwarzenegger, you've got something you're going for. Danny DeVito, if someone comes as a Danny DeVito, you go, yeah. oh, well, I think there's not too many guys that look, look like, like Danny DeVito. Agreed. Someone comes that they're sort of a normal looking guy with brown hair. Yeah. Like <laughs> Toby Maguire. Again. He's lucky he's a great actor because he doesn't have a remarkably <laughs> Exotic face, does he? So we, but again, if I saw a guy that looked like Tom McGuire, I would go, "Oh, he looks like yeah, Tom McGuire." Could be Fifty other people. <laughs> no, he won't. Tom <laughs> McGuire looks like Tom McGuire. That's why if I open a magazine and I see Tom McGuire, I go, yes. "Oh, that's Tom McGuire." Exact Not, face. That's either Toby or but fifty other people. You move it two or three degrees <laughs> left or right, and suddenly. You've, you actually incorporate a bunch of society. Whereas if you move Danny DeVito two or three degrees left to right, he still looks a lot like Danny DeVito. Oh, you get close to Joe Pesci. <laughs> Not that short. Not that round. Um, uh, 13, 10, 60. Here's the question. Do you know someone that you can bring along as celebrity locker? Do you know someone that you think get in, encourage them to come? Or is it yourself? Yeah. Do you want to be in the VIP marquee? Yeah, the only one there. It's going to be a wonderful spectacle, Ando, but if you... The organiser of the Melbourne Cup listening, you're probably saying to us, ha-ha, sorting out the race is one thing, boys, but what about the celeb factor? Yeah. And that's where we've, we've got them. Yes. Because we will have bigger names than Pe- the Melbourne Cup. Now, they might not be the people. No, we'll have- They'll be lookalikes. We'll be able to yeah. say we've got people that look like bigger names than the real people <laughs> that are going to the Melbourne Cup in Melbourne the day after. So, we won't actually have bigger names? No, we'll be saying bigger names, <laughs> <laughs> because we'll be saying who people look like. They will be, they, they, there is only one VIP marquee. Yep. Can I make a suggestion? Yeah. Instead of a very important person, could it be a very identical person <laughs> yes. that it stands for? A very identical person <laughs> in the you? VIP section. Matt, are, Matt. You, are you a very identical person? Ahoy, boys. Ahoy, Ahoy to you. Ahoy, Matty. Um, yeah, I've been told by all my mates if I put a photo up on Facebook or anything like that, that, uh, yeah, I look like Jonah Hill. Okay, oh, Matty, right. yeah, great. Yeah. Right. I mean, now, Matty, uh, would you be willing to come? I mean, you've got a risk. I mean, if you're coming just to get to the marquee, the risk for our very identifiable people is that they have to just walk up side unseen. They can't do any acting. Yep. They like, just you couldn't w- come up and do a scene out of Wolf from Wall, Wolf of Wall Street. We no. just have to be go, you're Jonah Hill. And then you're allowed in. Yeah, I could definitely do that. Fantastic. The good thing is, Matt... Jack, Kathleen Jack looks exactly like Michael Sarah, so you guys can do scenes from Superbad. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Matt. I mean, even if you don't get in, it's going to be a great time anyway to see and watch the thing. But this is you wouldn't go home. Just, no, you wouldn't go. Home. <laughs> I Jordan- mean, it actually you might get known as like a celebrity of the people. Going, oh, Jonah Hill was great. He was there, and he didn't go in the marquee. He was mingling with us. He's a good guy. <laughs> the Jonah Hill lookalike was great. Uh, Georgia, um, are you a very identical person? Hi, guys. Um, I'm not, but my dad is. Oh, yeah? Who um, could be? He looks like David Boone. Jeez. Oh, it'd be Which, nice see, to have Boone That's there, what I mean yeah. about having a feature that's yeah. immediately identifiable. Well, he's got to look yeah. big moustache. Well, I mean, he's got to look like Boone, but I mean, we, you see someone with the moustache and yeah. you're like, well, I think I know what this guy's going for. Really? He's got a trademarked moustache. Yes. I mean, it's known as the Boone. 
or yeah. or Merv, and very, or a smaller, <laughs> fatter Merv. Um, Alan Border had one as well. If you're going to keep going with the cricket stars, but not all the way down. Yeah, right. Not all the way down. Yeah. And that's Bernie. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, Georgia, bring him along. Jesse, talk Hi, to how us. Hey, going? Who do you uh, who do you have as a very identical person? Well, my husband's a bit of royalty. He looks like Prince William. Ooh. See, that's good, Jesse. Um, yeah. Now, so I don't want to be prying here, but thinning. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. A little bit yeah, thinning. It's okay, so, so we know. I mean, we know. We've seen so, it on Will. So yeah, um, yeah. he wears it well. Is he as bad as Will in that area, or? Um, no, not quite. I think he's better looking. Oh, okay. Well, handsome Will. <laughs> handsome Will. Okay. Yeah. Hopefully not too much more handsome. Will. We might not be identified. <laughs> <laughs> too, <laughs> sorry, mate. Too handsome for royalty. <laughs> uh, Kerry, who would you be able to uh, bring along as a lookalike? Oh, uh, hey, guys. I get a lot that I look like Bryn Edelston. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Kerry, now, do, oh, do you okay. take that as a, um, a a compliment or is that is that a negative? Um... Oh, uh, I, I, don't, I don't really judge it anymore. I don't sure. really care. Do you yep. wear similar dresses to her or is it more no, just a facial thing? No, it's more of a facial mm. thing. Well, do you have a 170-year-old husband? No, no un- okay. unfortunately not. He's not rich either. <laughs> okay, uh, okay that's I mean, a bit of a win-lose. <laughs> um, Kerry, we did say that you know people aren't allowed to wear costumes mm. to try and boost up their mm. identical factor. But I mean, it's very hard for like for Bryn. It's not really a costume, is it? It's just what she wears. It's well, Kerry would be fine because so you'd be in race wear. She'd be in race wear, and so that would be fine if she chose to come. Kerry, are you a chance to come along? Ah, uh, I think I could chance it. Yeah. Look, the the VIP marquee, the very identical person marquee, will be bloody amazing. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Can't give away all the secrets of what's in there because <laughs> we just invented it. But <laughs> it's a it's a shame that you're taken, uh, Kerry, because uh, Bradley Cooper's apparently meant to be there, or at least so it looks like him. I heard Prince William might turn up. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Kerry. Stick around, everybody. And Booney. <laughs> <laughs> One of the only events you'd find Prince William, Booney and Bryn Edelston at. <laughs> Same as Andy. <laughs> the race that slows down the nation, Ham. We're pretty excited about it because on November 2nd, there'll be 50 people from all around Australia in horse suits yep. on a country and a rural race, a horse racing track vying for the People's Cup. Galloping, galloping, galloping. In We're races. capping uh, either 20 million people that is, are allowed to come. Um, but that's, that's pretty wide, I'd say. Uh, but anyone, you can just rock up, bring a picnic rug, uh, probably an esky ham, Look, and, and, and watch the race. It will be a phenomenal sporting event. Mm. Never before have 50 fake horses been assembled like this. Mm. And we have encouraged horses to come down and have a watch as well. Yep. If they'd like to see some humans run... Whether you're a one-man suit or a two-man suit, you can enter hamishdanny.com if you would like to register as a horse. You don't need to register if you're just coming along the day, but start making your plans to get to the small town of Wedderburn because it's going to be packed. We had our first two people registered yesterday, Ham. Yep. And, uh, and Ham, uh, today we added a few more. We've given them, we've called oh. a few people off air this morning yep. just to let them know that they're going to be horses. We've got to fill up 50. We've, you mean, you're welcome to keep registering. I think mm. we're up to, what are we up to now, six that we've... Yep, assigned that are that are that are formally a part of the race. We'll start with fellow called Mick, um, who has registered Ham. I love his registration, and we love his suit. Mick, are you there? Yeah, mate, I'm here. Great, Mick. One or two man horse suit. It's a one man horse suit. Yeah, we're just seeing it here, Mick. Oh yeah, uh, sorry, I just you, had can, a look. Can you Gorgeous. Des- can you describe it for everybody out there? Well, his name is Pumper the Wonder Horse, yeah. and he's, he's actually the mascot for the Mackay Airport Beach Horse Racing Festival. Right, so okay. So he, he won the title last year. So you up in Mackay in Queensland? Absolutely, mate. He's the fastest fake horse in North Queensland. And I've seen pictures of that festival. That's where they race along the beach, yeah? That's it, mate. That's gorgeous. It. Hey, Mick, what impresses me about your horse suit, uh, not only is it a full horse suit, him including the head, he's wearing a Hawaiian top. Yep. I can't see any area. Now you say he's where- wearing a Hawaiian top, like that's a normal thing for a horse suit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a lovely touch. <laughs> that's an, uh, including, including the Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> including the Hawaiian shirt. I, I can't see any place where someone can see out of the head. Uh, it looks like it's got oh. flywire eyes. Is it that model? I think it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah, well, yeah. Where do you normally look been, out of? 
No, I've never been able to see out of it. I just run blind, mate. They just <laughs> okay. point me in the right direction. Well, we might have to tie out. you to another horse. <laughs> Mick, what? we would love you to come along. Are you willing to travel, though, from Mackay? Uh, unfortunately for you, we've picked the smallest town that entered, which was Wedderburn in, in northwestern Victoria. Would you travel down from North Queensland to participate so we could have Pumper the Wonder Horse in the race? Mate, the Mackay Regional Council... Mm-hmm have said that if I can go to Wedderburn and win this title, mm. they are going to give me the keys to the stable. Oh, so I am going, mate. You're yeah. going, <laughs> Miss. Great. Fantastic. Welcome, Welcome to the to race. Seeing bumper. <laughs> Fantastic. Hey, we move on to Stephen. That's exciting. This is so exciting. Horse number seven is added. This is so exciting because, Stephen, first of all, welcome to the show, my friend. Ahoy. Ahoy, Ahoy Steve. Second um, of all, I believe you have a two-man horse suit. Uh, two, a two-man suit. Yes. It, yeah, um, that's, the, that's the next bit we need to talk to you about. Got a picture <laughs> of it here. It's actually a mammoth suit, isn't it? <laughs> um, yeah, but I think um, horses are just a, an ancestor from, from mammoths, if I'm, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken. So, <laughs> hey, what so actually- officially, it's really, it's just a very, very, very old. <laughs> it's a historically <laughs> correct horse. <laughs> Stephen, where about are you from? A detective of an accent. Um, I'm from Belfast, from oh. Northern Ireland. Uh, hey, back in the day. It's no, there's always an Irish horse that comes there across is. for the Melbourne Cup that is definitely a roughy <laughs> and is exciting. We Never could, before. Have, have we, I mean, there's a new term, there's a new definition for roughy when you've got a prehistoric elephant <laughs> entering a horse race. Uh, a, pre- a prehistoric horse. So a prehistoric <laughs> horse, back with one, one of the long-nosed horses. <laughs> um, look, Steve, do you reckon it would be possible? Do you own the suit? Uh yeah, bought it last night. So online. you've got they're it. Going, they're going cheap, everyone, if you want to come and, I don't know. <laughs> if. I like the way that you've, you've thriftily found a way mm. to uh, to get yourself a two-person suit. Now, I'm, I'm very, you, you're within 1% here of being admitted to the race, mm. if, you, if the following conditions can be met, because I, I love the fact it's a two-person suit, and I think it's our first two-person suit of the race. Yep. That is well. the more classic and gentlemanly way to race. And if you're listening out there, we'd love more two <laughs> horsemen. We, we do encourage the two person yep. suit. It's a higher degree of difficulty, but it's a better better for the spectators. Uh, Stephen, could you take the tusks off, or at least tape them down behind the trunk? And <laughs> no. could you put a mane? Could you put a mane on the elephant? <laughs> Well, the man, a hundred percent, and uh, the t- yeah, the tusks we can. Uh, I mean, slightly we- hide them behind the trunk because, to me, the tusks are the first thing you see on the horse. <laughs> but I think maybe we just embrace the fact All right. that we have one. Keep mammoth. the tusks. Put a mane on the mammoth. <laughs> <laughs> um, Stephen, you're in. You're coming. Buddy. You're in. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Who's going to be? Uh, I mean, assuming the backup. I thought you'd take the race, but who's going to be uh, with you inside the uh, two man uh, his um, uh, prehistoric horse suit? Uh, my girlfriend. Uh, I don't know uh, who's gonna who's gonna take the front or the the back. Uh, I don't know. It's but, you, be a, but you do you know, know who your girlfriend is. I, I do. Yes. 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 Hey, yeah, step I think, one. I think a I girl guy combo. Yeah. Fantastic, Stephen. Uh, thank you very much. Head to hamishdaddy dot com if you'd like to register to be in the race. As a horse. I don't think a mane is too much to ask. No, no, no. That, 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 that's a fair that, be request fine. from the stewards. Yeah, think, we can't just admit any old thing. <laughs> yeah, think, but a, a mammoth with a mane, now you're talking. Now it's a horse. Save it, Andy. Amazing, Ham, that uh, for our race that slows down the nation, we just heard from Mick, who is going to travel from Mackay. Yep. North Queensland it's about, down. So it's about 2,000 k's at a mm. guess. As yeah. the crow flies, yeah. certainly a lot further as the fake horse runs, <laughs> yeah. which is what Mick will be doing and be taking his horse suit down to the small town of Wedderburn. If you want to be a horse, go to hamishnady.com. You just need a horse suit, uh, and one man or two man. Two man is the more classic. And more respected form of the horse <laughs> suit. And what we're finding, Andrew, is amongst the horse suit owning community, it's events like this that you absolutely wait for. <laughs> you absolutely, absolutely desperate for them. And I haven't actually offered this, but you make a good enough submission. Mm. I mean, I've got a horse suit. Yeah. I obviously can't race on the day because yep. you and I will be, I assume, commentating the race. Yep. Make a good enough submission. I'll lend you my suit. <laughs> yes, that's a lovely offer. Unless we do get up the website we mm. talked about the other day, uh, horse <laughs> suit. Was it horse suit trader <laughs> dot org. org? Yeah. I didn't I don't think we chased that up too hard after the show, <laughs> yeah. but I mean maybe that's another area I could put my suit up. Like if you have a suit but you can't race on the day, <laughs> just share it. Need a suit, got a <laughs> suit, just connecting people that need horse suits. Hey. 
our race that slows down ah. the nation, Ham. Um, November 2nd, open to all of Australia, open yep. actually to internationals as well. But what it is, is 50 people in horse suits yep. at a country race track yep. for one race only. Running full pelt, mm. trying to take home the chocolates, Ando, mm. trying to be the horse that got the chocolates. Yep. But only one of the fake horses in the races can have it. We've been concentrating a lot on the horse suits Mm -hmm. because we do want the highest quality. Hamishandandy.com, if you own a horse suit slash costume... Or you want to buy, make, or hire one. Or you're dedicated to one. Hamishandandy.com, if you would like to register to be one of the horses in the race. We do only have room for 50 horses. We should have a think about a prize for tomorrow, what what this winner takes away. The winner will take home something, and I'll tell you... Like, there might be a cash element, but maybe even local businesses can provide a hamper or something like that. <laughs> be lovely. We've been concentrating on the suit element. We haven't been concentrating at all on the running element. The athletes. And Fraser Burns is the name of a fellow who has registered to be a horse. We thought of a way we could potentially test him well, live on air now. Because he doesn't have a horse suit yet, but he has stated if he's selected as a horse, mm. he'll go to the ends of the earth to create a piñata horse outfit, mm. which would be beautiful. So far, the only one. Mm. We do have a way of testing him. Let's give him a buzz, Jacko, and see if this young man has got to take some the athletic side of things yes. to run in an awkward pinata horse suit. Also says he's got 12 years. 12 years of school aths. So he started in grade one. Jeez. Because you, know you, yeah. you know what you want to do, don't you? Unless you stayed down nine years. Yeah. He would have been the champion. <laughs> Hello? Is that, Is that Fraser? Fraser? Yep. Hey, Mr. Andy here, mate. How are you going? Yeah, really yeah. Well. Hey, great, mate. Listen, we got your entrant form for the race that slows down the nation to be a horse. How dedicated are you? Extremely dedicated, 100%. Fantastic. Fraser, we've been concentrating a lot on the horse suits. We're very excited that you want to wear a horse pinata type suit if it comes to it. We haven't been concentrating enough on the athletic ability of our horses. Whereabouts are you right now? At home. At home? Fraser, here's what we want to do. And hopefully this is okay. You on a mobile? Yep. We want to practice how good you are at running in an awkward position. What's near you at the moment? What can you see? Um, a chair. Grab it. What type of chair <laughs> is it? Uh, sort of like a pool chair, like an outdoor chair. Yeah, yeah, yeah grab, grab it. Grab, grab that. Grab it. It's great. It's great. So if you can grab take it, that, take it outside. Take it out of the front. Describe what you're doing. Whereabouts are you in the house now? Just round the back. Yeah, okay. okay. <laughs> He's worried. Here's what we want you to do, Phrase. As fast as you can, run 100 metres <laughs> carrying the chair. All right. Ready? Have you got shoes on? No, I don't have shoes on. Oh, good, <laughs> good, even better. This is very awkward. <laughs> awkward running. That's what we're testing. You ready, Froze? I'm ready. Ready, set, go. go. Are you running? I'm running. <laughs> <laughs> Over, oh, ant nest. Tell us when you get to 100. Oh, I've, I've, I reckon I'm almost at 100. <laughs> That's a quick uh, 100. <laughs> 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 I made the 100, I reckon. <laughs> That's about a seven-second 100 well, metres. other horses beware. <laughs> We've just beaten the world 100-metre record by two to two and a half seconds. We're waiting for official times to come in. Andy was <laughs> barefoot. Andy yeah. was carrying a chair. <laughs> Andy ran over an ant nest. <laughs> Suck on that, Usain Bolt. All right, Fraser. Hey, you're in. You're in. You're, you're a horse. Yeah, you're in. <laughs> You're a horse. Fantastic news. <laughs> you're officially a horse. You are now you're, you're and, within the first ten horses to secure their spot. And in betting circles, you are at low odds. You're a favourite. <laughs> you, oh, you might have to do five laps to everyone's one. <laughs> Make sure you get yourself to Wedderburn, uh, Fraser. We look forward to seeing you in the north west of Victoria, just beyond the New South Wales border. We will see you then on November 2nd, bud. No drivers. Cheers, buddy. Congratulations. Well, you. Great Shenanigan. time again. <laughs> The race that slows down the nation, November 2nd, all of Australia, look at the world is invited. Ah, well played again, Sam. Um, The world's invited. It is a 50-person race. Everyone must be in a horse suit, and it's being held in the rural town on an actual race, a horse racing track in Wedderburn. Very small country town, and uh, we've managed to secure the lease of the track. We've yep. got the town's blessing. The mayor's on board. The town is pumped. Normally a town of 500, yep. uh, but they are ready and able for that population to swell by thousands and thousands, if not tens of thousands, yep. as they come down to watch people gallop around as fast as they can in their one- or two-man horse suits, but there will only be 50 horses in the race. We're capping it at that. Now, we, we've been flooded with entries, mm. and we still haven't assigned 
the full 50 no. horses yet. We're sifting through them because we want to pick quality horses. So if you do have a horse suit, you've got the desire to race, hamishandandy.com. You follow the easy links there to click on, yes, I want to be a horse. <laughs> now, one man that has done that, Ando, mm. but is taking me up on my offer yesterday of saying, listen, I have a horse suit, mm-hmm. but you and I will be commentating, so I won't be able to run in the race. That's true, yeah. We've had a request for someone to run in the suit. His name's Tom. He joins us now. Tom, how are you going? Uh, good, boys. How are you? Yeah, really well, good, Tom. Tom. Now, your entrance, uh, your entry form, it spiked my interest a bit, Tommy, because you want my suit, but you have a checkered past with racing. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, you won the stall gift, which is a, is, am I right saying it's an amateur, is a 100 metre sprint? Uh, it's over. It's a handicap race over 120 metres. Yeah, it's an amateur race in Victoria. I think it's the largest paying amateur running race in Australia. Uh, it's, it is. It yeah. is. It's the only time you really hear about a running race outside the Olympics, <laughs> yeah, to be exactly. honest. So you won that, Tom, but um, the authorities questioned your win. They did. Uh, look, there's about 20 races prior to the stall gift and uh, a lot of athletes competing and buying for a, a better handicap and I was one of those athletes that mm. uh, advised during my time that uh, I might have been maybe a little more economically beneficial to be a little less fit I guess in earlier races and uh, cost me uh, $5,000 in the end. Well, so so to, to make this really clear for our listeners, essentially yeah. you have to run heats or run practice runs and they take those times and that determines how much of a head start you get on the fastest person in the field. So you decided to run a little slower during those time setting, uh, knowing that you get a bigger head start during the gift. Uh, well, look, that's the, the general consensus. Yeah, that, uh, that was the accusation. I, I now, do you, did you actually do that, Tom, or are you crying foul on that accusation? Uh, oh, very yeah, he well. Did it. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. regardless of whether you did it or not, Tommy, you've, you've said here that you want to run for redemption. You want to run in the race that slows down the nation for redemption, which I love. I love the notion. And it's, you say you haven't run since back then, since 2010. Mm, so, yeah. Are you, now, are you dogging us again? Or are you, <laughs> <laughs> have you lost conditioning, or do you reckon you, you could complete the 800 metres around the track? 800? Yeah, it's 800, yeah. Tom. Oh, okay. I know you're right. more of a, a sprinter. <laughs> um, I mean, you did win at the top level, so it's got to be in there somewhere. 800 well, metres, Tom, will you do it? I'll definitely do it. Tommy, you've, you've applied here. You don't have a suit. Mm. You've asked if you could borrow mine. Is this who you're giving it to him? Tom, I love the story of the underhorse here. <laughs> Coming back in to clear his name, I would like to offer you my suit, Tom. You're a legend. I'd love to. <laughs> Tommy, we look forward to seeing you there. Huge. A rascal's ra- chance for redemption, <laughs> Ham. <laughs> what, what have you gone for for your horse name, Tom? Uh, I think I put down uh, handbrake. Do you want to change it to Rascal's Redemption? <laughs> <laughs> Rascal's Redemption. Sure. Yeah, great. Yeah, good. <laughs> Rascal's Redemption. <laughs> uh, certainly a crowd favourite. <laughs> good on you, Tommy. HamishDaddy.com. If you have a horse suit, you want to be in the race, you can head there. Their spots are filling up. It's Hamish Daddy, Pants Off Friday. <laughs> Hamish Daddy, driving you home. And Ham, our race that slows down the nation. We are looking for horses. 50 people inside horse suits that will be running around a rural racetrack, Ham. Uh, normally reserved for horses, but uh, t- it's going to be run by people. And uh, a we're much more wonderful spectacle. Encouraging everybody to get there on uh, the day that's the, before the Melbourne Cup, Monday the 2nd. And we've also been encouraging people, if they want, to submit themselves in and register themselves as a chance to become a horse or a person in a horse suit for the race. Well, we've bitten off a lot here, Ando, yeah. trying to not only organise the whole horse race, uh, but get the horses as well. Yeah. Um, because it's a, it is a different kind of race. So, having said that, we have been flooded by applicants, <laughs> yeah. and we do encourage you, if you have a horse suit, don't dilly-dally. Mm. Uh, this is your chance to be part of racing history. Hamishnanny.com. Be a horse yep. is the link you need to follow there. Mia joins us. Mia, yours is an interesting one and a bit unique because what have you guys done, you and your workplace? We've decided to submit our boss in and she doesn't know. Yes. Yeah, you've nominated your boss as a horse. Yes. Now, now, you did send a picture of a, someone in a horse suit. Is that your boss? Well, we've got a video of her in it and yes, that's my boss. Yeah. So she has the suit, has obviously worn it round a bit, but is not, has not registered yet as a horse. That's correct. Mia, what kind of workplace is it? 
It's an accountant. Okay, accountants. Is your boss at work at the moment? Yes. Okay, we're going to call her. So you just hang on the line. And her name's Michelle, isn't it? That's right. All right, let's see whether Michelle picks up and whether she knows she's been nominated. I feel like there was a crazy amount of echo on me as called. A bit of me feels like she was in the toilets, hiding. <laughs> I reckon she's hiding from the boss so she doesn't get she does not, nothing, no rats a smell. Mm-hmm. Hello? Hello, is that Michelle? Yes. Hi, Michelle. Michelle. Hey, Mish Nandy here. Oh, my God. Do you know why we're calling? No. <laughs> Don't worry, you, you haven't forgotten the phrase that pays. Um, something far more amazing has happened than uh, than winning a radio contest. You've won a shot at sporting history, Michelle. To answer us this question, true or false, do you have a horse suit? Yes, I do. Have your employees seen you in that horse suit? <laughs> yes. Your staff have done the right thing. <laughs> Because when they heard that we were taking over the very, very tiny rural town of Wedderburn in the far north of Victoria for our race that slows down the nation the day before the Melbourne Cup, and we're encouraging anyone that owns a horse suit to register as one of the 50 horses because it would just be people in horse suits. Oh, my God, I'd do it. Michelle, you've been submitted by Mia, one of your trusty accountants. She's here with us now. Mia, are you there? Hi, Michelle. (laughs) You're such a bitch. (laughs) Oh, my God. And you're such a nag, Michelle. The greatest (laughs) nag that ever ran in the race. (laughs) Michelle, are you interested in coming to the small rural town of Wedderburn to participate in the horse race in a horse suit? Yes, but I'm very competitive. You need to know that. Yes! (laughs) Michelle, you're in. You're in the field. This is great. This is actually how most horses get put in a race anyway. Someone else submits them. Very rarely does the horse submit themselves. We're so impressed with your suit, Michelle, as well. Oh, my gosh. Have you seen the video? Well, we haven't seen the video. We've only seen a still. We've seen a still. I mean, if you you send us through the video, man, we'll definitely put it up. So people are you guys, uh, you guys are in Queensland, we understand? Yes. Great. Fantastic. So you're Queenslanders. Now, the race is down in Victoria. Yeah, just beyond the New South Wales border. So it's probably a flight down. It's a Melbourne or a Canberra. Or a road trip. A nice road trip. Or ch- <laughs> chuck yourself in the float and get Mia to tow you down. <laughs> oh, my gosh. This is awesome. Michelle, hey, we're so It's going to be a bloody good weekend. Mm. We'll obviously be there across the weekend. <laughs> Everyone's going to come and take over this tiny town. Hang on there, guys. We'll give you more details. HamishNetty.com, Ham, for anyone who wants to register or a, as a horse, or if you think you know someone perfect, like me has done here. The spots are filling up, Ando. <laughs> what are we at now, 11? Yeah, we'll be closing in. Yeah. I actually think we're closing in on 15, because right. they're yeah. falling like we're, dominoes. We're throwing a few off air as well, but this is bloody exciting. It's the race that slows down the nation. HamishDanny.com. We're driving you home. Pants off Friday. Our race that slows down the nation, Ham. It's going to be on November 2nd, a Monday, day before the Melbourne ah. Cup. And uh, well played on the trumpet again. Did, we had somebody <laughs> write in and go, why does Amish exhale after he plays the trumpet? Wouldn't he be out of breath and need to inhale? Great question. And thanks for your interest yeah. in my trumpeting. But I actually have so much breath in me at all times. Yeah. I'm, I only use about 5% mm. for the bugling there. Yep. And the 95% I have sort of as a backup. But yeah, good observation. <laughs> Haim, our race is 50 people from around Australia in, in horse suits. Mm-hmm. And the small country horse racing track in Wedder- Wedderburn. Can I throw a stat at you, Ando? Yeah. The population of Wedderburn is not even 500. Mm-hmm. We, that means we will have more than 10% of, of, the, of the country town's population dressed as horses. <laughs> That's, that in itself has got to be a record. Yeah. If you held that in Sydney, yeah. we'd be saying we've sort of got more than 500,000 people yep. in horse suits. Tough. Tough. So that's why, you know, Wedderburn is a good option as a very small country town. But it's a wonderful stat. Mm. Luckily, though, we'll have tens of thousands of people converging on the town because it's a free event. Yep. And we encourage everyone to get, get in there over the weekend, drive down, however you need to get there, make your way. You and I were having a few sippers yesterday mm-hmm. and catching up and just throwing out throwing around ideas. We well, feel like there should be a purse. Yeah. Because when you're running a horse race... Mm. A, you need to get together on the weekend and have a think about it. <laughs> but yeah. B, one of the things that we noticed is different between our race mm. and l- let's use the Melbourne Cup as an example because this will be on the day before the Melbourne Cup. Yeah. Pros and cons. Mm. Uh, pros, our horses, we have more. We have twice yep. as many horses, so we're better than the Cup there. Yeah. Um, we were mu- far more of a spectacle. Yep. You never know what you're going to get with our race. Mm-hmm. Very uh, predictable. And that's super predictable, the Melbourne Cup. Yeah. Go back. If you're not into horse racing, you could watch. You'd be tough to tell. Yeah. If you took the 
colours and numbers off the horses. Yeah. I doubt anyone can go, oh, that's 96's race. Mm. You know our race. I mean, yeah. our race stands out. That's a pro. Um, it's free. Yep. Ours, that's exciting. I mean, the Melbourne Cup has a lot of costs, so yep. it makes sense you've got to charge a little bit there. It's a fun our, day out. Our horses do autographs. Our horses will stick around afterwards and do autographs for you. <laughs> you and you can that. have a chat to our horses. <laughs> you don't see that. Though, that's cup. massive. Yeah. Cons. The Melbourne Cup is the richest race yep. in the Southern Hemisphere, mm. I believe. Uh, Mil- was, what is it, $5 million for it, the winner? It's a lot of money. And um, we thought, yes, we at least need to dip our toe into that area. So we're thinking $2,000. $2,000 for the winner, cash. Winning horse gets two grand. Winning horse gets two grand. We'd love a sponsor. Obviously, yeah, we'd love a sponsor. Obviously, if you are a <laughs> sponsorship available, if you are a two person, well, it could be from the town, could be the bakery from the yep. town. If you chuck it, if you just would love one, Darren might be. If you're Good. Darren's pie mart, <laughs> let us know. You can, you can absolutely have sponsorship of the cup, could not the great. cup, just the money. Yeah, that's the other thing too. It's always going to be the people's cup. It yep. will always be the race that slows down the nation. Yep. Uh, you just, just sponsor the, the actual the money, novelty check. You sponsor the check. Yeah. Yeah. He's, and, and I think that's fair. And look, I know it, it does provide an incentive, mm. though, to be a one-man horse suit because yep. you don't have to split it with anyone. But we're going to have a head start for the two-man horse but suits. But you're more of a chance to win if you're in a two-man horse suit or a two-girl horse suit, yep. which is the more respectable form of horse, race, horse suit racing. We're up to 15 horses registered, Ham. We've got to really pull our finger out because there's so many registrations in there. We haven't gone through Do them. Do you know what? There's let's, over 100. I'm going to add I'm gonna add some people here. Yeah, let's just ba- start banging. I would suggest if you're thinking of registering, get it in this week yeah. before Annie and I go through the pile. Because yeah. once we go through the pile, everyone, all the horse spots will be taken. Exactly. HamishDanny.com if you want to be a horse. Kevin from South Adelaide, you're in. That's standard, isn't it? Isn't it? He's gone. He's got, well, he'll be our only black horse so far. He's going to be a replica of the Queen Black Caviar herself. Yep. And he's calling himself Black Fish Eggs. You're in. Congratulations. <laughs> right. Here was one that I was unsure of, him. I wanted to run it by you. It's a pokey suit, the yep. uh, horse from Gumby. Yep. Yep. In. Love it. Okay, it's in. Kristen, you also going? She's from Shepparton in Victoria. Bringing the whole family too. She says, great. And wrapping this up, Ham, this is, uh, okay, from, this is fr- from Balmain. His name's Chris. He's got a seahorse suit. Yep. Oh, do we have him on the line? Chris. Mm. Uh, yeah, hey, guys. How are you going? Very good, mate. Hey, just looking at a picture of your suit now. Mm. Um, is that you in the suit or is that the standard internet no. photo? No, that, that, that's the uh, stock standard. Internet photo, right. Is it the same suit? Will you be wearing the black pyjamas underneath the yellow seahorse outfit? Oh, look, that, that, that'll be for the day, but um, probably if it's $2,000, I'll probably wear my skins. Yeah, yeah, look good. Good. yeah, yeah. That would look, look really good. good. The only thing that concerns me slightly, Chris, and you'll know what I'm talking about here, is the tail yeah, of the seahorse. Because yeah. the seahorse tail curls around to the front, the costume makers have decided to hang it off the groin yep. rather than it's a front tail. Yep. It, it was definitely a thought when I bought the suit. Um, <laughs> it, you know, you, you, when looking like an idiot, you've got to you know, help yourself as much as you can. Yes, Jeez, you're, you're a fairly well-endowed seahorse. i tell you the, the bit that's got me across the line is the fact that uh, in the former it says, why do you want to run the race that slows down the nation? You've written to be a part of a major part of Australian history. You haven't <laughs> been a hog and just said to be part of history. You just want to be yeah, a part of a part of it. <laughs> so, mate, part of a part. <laughs> you'll, be a, you'll be a small fraction of the day, but a um, huge fraction of our hearts will be, will be rooting for the only seahorse in the race. I think you're in. Oh, great. Oh, I, think you're in. Great. I think you're in. Yeah, oh, awesome. Thanks, guys. And um, you've got, you're going to go buy a car from, uh, from Sydney, do you think, mate? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll, there's a few of us. I work in a bar, so none of us work on Mondays or Tuesdays. So. Great. So head on down. There's going to be a big <laughs> right. convoy leaving from Sydney. Uh, it is just into the Victorian of the state of Victoria, just over the border. Yep. Great. Very yeah. easy to get there. Um, Hamish, full, yeah. Full, like, yeah. <laughs> the, the, the road system is wonderful. One yeah, of the reasons been, the government built it. Hours. Yeah, in the no, 20s. I, I, did, I did look it up before I, uh, beforehand. It's only nine and a half hours. That's <laughs> fine. It's fine. If you can do it in under 10, uh, you know, you'll do it again. That's no. what they say. <laughs> now, nah, we realise it's a bit of a trick, but it's going to be a lot of fun. Good on you, Chris. HamishDaddy.com. If you want to register as a horse, we need more two man horse suits. Ham, hey, our race that slows down the nation. 50 people in horse suits at the small country racetrack of Wedderburn. Everyone in Australia is invited to come watch or internationally you come as a spectator. You do have to register at hamishnetty.com if you want to run in the race. Want to be a horse? Go to the website. And we recommend doing that. There's now a $2,000 purse yep. up for the winning horse, winning person in a horse suit. Mm. Um, and, you know, I mean, if that... We already had over 100 entries with the two... Now that the $2,000 is there... Mm. 
You, there's going to be a flood. We've only... How many have we given away? I can't remember the exact number, but it's uh, under 20. 18. 18. We've officially anointed 18 of the horses, but yeah. warning, we are going to work our way through the stack. Mm. Be in the stack so you can officially be registered as a horse. And look, there's a little bit of a conflict of interest after we found out that there's $2,000 up for grabs for the winner because a friend of ours has been on the show before, Hillier yeah. is his name. He contacted us over the weekend, said he wants to run, yep. wants to be in a two-man horse suit with his friend Pez, now mate Pez, and he said, get me in. And look, we'd love to have him, but- uh, He would be a fantastic horse. He joins us now. Uh, Helia, uh, first of all, thanks for your nomination. No problems, boys. Um, what, what drew you to the race? Oh, probably because I could just win it. Straight away. It's always nice to just <laughs> find out about things you can win. What makes you think you can win it? I'm pretty quick. I mean, I don't know how <laughs> fast the race. Hey, the, I, for the race. Ask Andy. Ask hey, Andy. I'll, I'll, yeah. <laughs> this, this, is like, this is like, honestly, there was a TV show. I can't remember what it was, and they said, oh, I dare you to race out. So we raced at the, at the pub. Remember, Andy? Was it? Yeah, yeah. Me well, versus Hogs, and yeah, I smashed him by yeah, 10 metres. Yeah, yeah, yeah but this is yeah, an 800 yeah. metre race. Um, you yeah, well, it, it, it's 800 metres, but you'll be in the two-man horse suit, so it's yours will be shorter. 400 is pretty 40 quick. 40 metres? No, no. 400 metres. 400 metres at the minimum. Oh, no, we're out. No, no we, we, I can't run 400. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you I didn't know about this. You well, know, how funny you think it is? It's not a sprint. It's not 40 metres. We're not making everyone <laughs> go to like a long... Mate, this is like the Melbourne Cup, and it's like, no one's interested in 3,200. No, 1,600 sprints on. We're, war- we're taking over a small country town. People are coming, people are going across from Perth, mate, to yeah. a country town in Victoria. They're not doing yeah. it for a 40 metre run. <laughs> yeah. This has so, got to have some. This has got to have some. Well, I'll do it. a black caviar sort of exhibition of 40 metres. <laughs> <laughs> what a treat for the town. <laughs> no, look, Hillier, the good news is if you are in a two man suit, you go off, a, you get a head start of half a track. Yeah. The one man horse suits have to run 800. You will be in the two man. And only having to do 400 metres. Do you think you can do 400 metres, H? Uh, you'd have to have a defib and oxygen on standby. <laughs> think, of, I don't know. think of the adrenaline. <laughs> well, that, that only lasts for 30 metres. That's how I usually win. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you, 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 you are quite, strangely for a bigger man, you're quite quick. But, and you mean you reach maximum velocity Look, quite quickly. Here's oh. the thing, Hillier. We want you in the race. Mm. I'd love to have you in the race. I think you'd be a good horse. Um, I'm just not convinced. He, uh, he, he never looks up and, and all the details and thing, things like this. Hillier, well, I never do. I, I never do any. You know that. That's I know. something that everyone loves about me. But, you know, look, <laughs> I, I, you gotta get it. You've got to meet Hillier. He's so bad at details. <laughs> <laughs> he just uh, jump a thing on a whim. So, Hillier, are you interested if it's a 400 metre race? Look, I, I don't know. I mean, a bit of peer group pressure maybe, but what I'm thinking might be the better one to do is we have a sort of like a bedknob and broomstick sort of race and we could race our mates, you know. Hawking could come as the giraffe. I'll be the gorilla, you know. Like, Are you talking about way. the film, the <laughs> Disney film in the 80s which had a lot of different animals racing each other? Yes, that's exactly yeah, what I'm Mate, we've decided yeah. on the event. This Don't wasn't, try and change our This event. wasn't, hey, call up and tell us, you know, oh, I'll run as Mario, you go as Yoshi, and just invent a new event. <laughs> Do it in your own time. Yeah. Do you want to be in a horse suit or not? I'll be in the horse suit, yeah. and I'll, I'll, have a, I'll have a few uh, ales, but yeah, I don't know if I could run the 400. I'm really <laughs> okay, worried about it. Okay. We'll come back in tomorrow. <laughs> Let's go to the have news a think break. About it, have, have a think about it, H. I mean, you've pestered me all weekend to get in the race, and now you've heard of the details live on air, and you're not interested. Oh, we were going to weigh it up. We were going to weigh up the pros and cons, but if he doesn't know if he wants to be in it, no point. <laughs> Our race that slows down the nation is on Monday, the 2nd of November. You can register... To be a horse in the race, hamishnetty.com.au, because there's going to our race consists of 50 people in uh, in horse suits yep. at the country rural racetrack of Wedderburn. Then come along in your race gear. Uh, dress up, dress up, come along. It's going to be a hell of a day. Yep. What a spectacle, Ando. Hmm. We've managed to get the lease on the racetrack. We've got the town's blessing. The mayor's on board. Yep. Let's have a chat to the mayor tomorrow. Because yep. I think there's a community meeting happening tomorrow night. I've got a few things we need to float <laughs> past the mayor, because if they go to this community meeting hmm. without us, we're in big trouble. Um, and we need to we didn't we need to get on the agenda. We got a lot yeah. to do. It is very difficult to organise a horse race. Really, yeah. hats off to the Melbourne Cup. I mean, to, whoever the two guys are that organise the Melbourne Cup, <laughs> hats off to them. Hey, and we want to be in in their league. We want to be in the league of the Kentucky Derby over in the states. Yep. We want to be in the same league as Royal Ascot, where yep. the Queen goes and watches those horses. Interesting, you bring up the Queen, Ando, mm. because what has Royal Ascot always got? A royal. Yep. Specifically, one of the trump cards in the royal deck, the Queen. 
Yes, it's a goodie, isn't it? She's a goodie. She gets there and watches every time. Put the feelers out. I mm. doubt we'll get the queen. I, I, I'm not ruling it out, no. but I doubt it. But, it but would you didn't be... think you could get Julian Assange and you got him? Pretty right, aren't you? I suppose. You never know what I can mm. do when I put my mind to it. Has you got any books coming <laughs> Yeah. Queen doing press at all. Uh, <laughs> a, you know, a corgi dog show happening in rural New South Wales or Victoria that we could maybe get her on the promo tour for. Yeah. Look, let's just say we don't get Queen Elizabeth. She's wouldn't it be done, nice? W- wouldn't it be nice though, to get a royal that no one's heard of? Well, that's probably you're probably saying that because that's probably you no. Know, that's probably because we're we're sitting at. But if there's a royal out there, here's thirteen ten sixty. And this, I know, if you've got any link to a royal. We know a royal's probably not listening, but here's I just Googled, for instance, mm. the King of Tonga. Mm-hmm. What did you um, say? Tupo. Oh, yeah. The sixth. Tupo the sixth. So, look, Tupo's probably busy because yeah. he's a king. Mm. He's got to have a son or a daughter. I reckon we'd start or with a cousin. Tupo, wouldn't we? What's Imagine. the cousin of the king worth? Is that a prince or a princess? <sighs> or are you a duke? He's probably a duke at that point. Mate, I'd take the Duke of Tonga. Take the, okay, well, I'd, I'd prefer Tupo. Oh, man, I'll, you'd take the king. I know, <laughs> well, the, I know you're sorry. aiming for the stars. I know, but, but I don't want to... Bypass if we've got an opportunity that he's keen to come out, yep. and we've already and we go straight to his cousin. Phone lines have lit up. We want if you know of any royal worldwide <laughs> yeah, of any country, give us a lead. Mm. I mean, the other thing is too, we've got to hit a royal right in that level of they're not doing anything in yep. three weeks' time because again, your queens and stuff like that, they'd have a we'll, lot of their year. We'll fly them out. out. Oh yeah. yeah, don't worry, we'll fly them out and we'll the, put um, them up, and it'd be great to have a sponsor. Put them up at the hotel or the motel. <laughs> Ace currently unsponsored. It's the kind of exactly the kind of thing a sponsor would like to be attached to. <laughs> you know, it could be just Jim's Mower Mart. Fly out a royal. Sean's there. Um, Sean on thirteen ten sixty. Do you know any royal of any part of the world? Yeah, yeah. I, I work with the cousin, I think, or the niece of the King of Tonga. Gee, yeah. so you've got a link Tupo. to Tupo. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> hey, hey. I'm not sure we're uh, pronouncing his name right, but um, what's the vibe from the cousin or the niece? What's the family like? Oh, you know, they're, they're quite a nice people. Yeah, of course. Now, Sean... They, they, they try, you know, they don't try to make it very public. They try and sort of hide it. Yep. How'd you find out, Sean? Hey? How'd you find out that... Uh, uh, you know, a little bit of detective work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the <laughs> <only> <laughs> out of lunchroom. Anyone here related to the King of Tonga? <laughs> hey, uh, Sean... Yeah. Just from your vibe, how often do you talk to the, the cousin or the niece of the oh, king? daily. Daily. From your vibe, how busy is Tupo? Oh, you know, pretty busy. He's got a pretty hectic life. Okay, yeah, so he, would, he wouldn't be able to come out, for instance, for us. No, well, he, he only got in, what do they call it, when they, when they become king? Oh. Kingship? Yeah. Yeah, he only got king shifted. <laughs> well, you've dropped a fake word with an even more fake word. A couple of months ago. Oh, he's a new king. A new king, right. He's still yeah, got yeah, the new yeah, king yeah, about, about, oh, about six months ago, I think. Yeah, so, do you reckon, so if he tells the people of Tonga, hey, listen, I'm nicking off to Australia for a horse race, it's too early to take a junket like that? Nah, I don't reckon. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, okay. Right. Thank well, you. he's still on the list. Sean, Thanks, Sean. Sean, thank you. Hold on the line because we want to follow that great up. Great. Azam. Intel. How are you going, Eddie? Yeah, good, mate. You got a link to a royal? I do. My one of my uni mates, mm. his girlfriend uh, is actually an East Timorese princess. Boom! Ooh, like that. And she's in she's in Australia. She is. She's in Melbourne, down down near me as well. Okay, she so is there, uh, she's close to the racetrack. Yeah, uh, well, the closest <laughs> spot, closer <laughs> than close enough. You know, far north Queensland. <laughs> yeah. Um, Azam. Uh, so it's the princess. So she's obviously. Is there still a king in East Timor? I think actually the king may have been assassinated. Yeah, this one. Right. Oh, that's, that's pity. That's, no that's, that's why they, there's a They've got story out of there. behind it. Yeah, yeah that, that's why they're here in Australia. Right, okay. okay. But still, the, I, mean, the, I mean, we're not. The princess ship remains. Mm-hmm. Um, it, we, she's still a princess. Yeah, absolutely. That's so it counts. Great. Oh, Azam, hang on a line. I'd like to get the details of that. I mean, that counts. Would well, we the get royal more than him. one royal? Tori. Hello. You've got a link to a royal. I do. Well, my mum's best friend is actually a princess on an island called Fortuna in French Polynesia. Great. Oh, this is exactly... Fortuna favours the brave. The level. Uh, yes. How how big's Fortuna? Um, only a few hundred people, I think. Yep. Pretty small. Smaller yep. than the actual small country town we're taking over for the race. <laughs> so she won't, be, she won't be out of her element ham well, if she you, goes to a smaller town. That's the thing. She'll know exactly how to handle herself in a town of 500. Mm. Well, we're lords. I mean, we're lords, Tori, on a technicality. Annie yeah. and I bought one square foot of a noble land. of a noble piece of noble land in Scotland mm. off the internet to get lordships. Wow. Is she sort of more official than that? I think so. Well, I know her dad was the chief for many years, and she speaks fluent French. If that's any benefit. Okay, so Tor- so so is it not a is it not a king but a chief over there? 
I believe so. Well, she always refers to her father as the chief. Jeez. Jeez. I mean, okay. I love the idea of getting the chief to the races too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> How busy are they? Like, could you get the whole family yeah, What out level or? of royal duty is happening? I'd probably have to ask, but I know she has been to royal events before to represent her family. Okay, this is good. Oh, this princess is good. of Fortuna. Yeah, and, and it's got kind of a Lord of the Rings feel to it. No offence to Fortuna, <laughs> yeah. but it does sound like a made-up country. <laughs> yeah. uh, and, and, and I mean, I'm only offending Tory, 400 people. <laughs> Tori, is it a country or is it... Um, I'm not 100% sure. I just know it's kind of in French Polynesia. Yeah, right. Okay, great. Okay, so well, I mean, I mean, so maybe they're all good for me, for Namibia, or it's it's around there, I suppose. Yeah, it's in the ocean. It's right out there. It's right out <laughs> there in the ocean, Caledonia. like a lot of the like a lot of islands, <laughs> smack bang in the middle of an ocean. <laughs> well, hey, do we want to lock it off now, or? Well, Let's, I mean, we've got to make some calls overnight. We've got horses. Keep them coming in at hamishandy.com on the email if you've got any other links to a roll. It just, I so many people have come in. We have to take these calls off air. Yeah. People know, like Tonga seems to be getting a lot of... West African I'm seeing there as well. Okay. Um, let's pick this up. Like we did have someone ring up with pretty much the plot line from Last King of Scotland. Mm. So I don't know if we accept that, none that, of those ones. Like real, real royals. Let's pick this up tomorrow. Right. Right. It's before. locking a royal. <laughs> it's locking so a it royal. It actually doesn't seem as difficult as we thought it would be. Stick around, everyone. A chance to win some money on this show. We never do giveaways. Yeah. Chance to win some money. What is the top prize? I think we've got it at $113. It's unlike. I mean, I know so what the unlikely. game is. It's very unlikely you win that much, but you could win the some game, dollars. The game's fun. Time's <laughs> Our race that slows down the nation... I thought it was irresponsible that the race just, that stops the nation just brings everyone to a halt so quickly, Ham. So we're getting on board the idea of a horse carnival. We're starting our own. It's at the small town of Wedderburn, and the races are 50 people in horse suits of any different kind. People from all over Australia are coming, Ando. Uh, they're coming as spectators, yep. and they're coming as horses. Yep, a guy from North Queens, I think it was Mike was his name. He's coming down. He's running his horse. Driving down. We've yeah. got horses coming from Tassie. We've got yep. horses from WA. New South beautiful. Wales. Yep. It's a really beautiful thing, Ando. Um, but a lot of people, I'd say, look, if you had to if you had to put a percentage on it, you'd mm. say probably 60% of the standard one-man horse suits. Yep. Um, then I think we've got half a dozen two-person horse suits. Yep. They're usually... We moved, we moved to, yeah, five today. They're, yes. They're usually kind of the pantomime type uh, <laughs> two-person horse suit. Yeah. Very difficult to be the back. A lot easier to run at the front. Yep. They're glorious. We've got a seahorse. Yes. We have an Irishman in a mammoth outfit, <laughs> yeah. in a two-person mammoth yeah. outfit. With his uh, partner here. His with, his, with his girlfriend, wife, yeah. uh, she the, he did state that you know, look, a mammoth is essentially a prehistoric horse. <laughs> it's loose logic, yeah. but um, we're happy to have him and on it's board. It's nice to have an international in there. It's nice to have an international in there. So the, the the mammoth is in there. We've asked him to put a mane on it, and that's not. I don't think that's an outlandish request. If you're listening now, you are a member of the Turf Club at Wedderburn because yeah. um, everyone is allowed to come and watch this race. We can't wait to see you on the day. Your the race ears, will be around five o'clock. Your ears have just given you membership. Yep, and we do recommend being there in person because it will be. A stunning piece of sporting history, as good as the Melbourne Cup the next day. Two yep. wonderful horse races. Yep. I don't think encroaching on each other's turf. No, um, but you do suspect there'll be a tinge of jealousy on their behalf. <laughs> Just a tinge. But they didn't also have a horse suit race <laughs> on their big day. And I, uh, I wanted to bring up a, a rule we made. I think on the day we th- the idea of the horse suit struck us. Mm-hmm. Do you remember we were chatting and and you said, "Oh, what if someone puts a mountain bike under their horse suit?" Yes. Or no, we said, what if the horses w- rode a bike? No, well, someone rang up and asked. Oh, did they? It. Yeah, and I said no. And I think we both made the right call there because yeah. we said that no one has paid good you know, yeah. time because it is a free event, so they mm. haven't paid good money, but no one's paid good time to turn up and watch a horse ride a bike. And it was good. <laughs> what he said, though, was it was a tandem bike. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. And, so. and look, we just didn't feel that that was the sporting nature, and I think we made a rule at the time of no wheels. Mm-hmm. Could I float an exception to the rule of no wheels? Dean joins us on the line. Dean, uh, I've got your registration here in front of me. How are you, mate? Ahoy, boys. Ahoy to you, Ahoy, Dean. Dean. Now, look, uh, Andy doesn't know what your horse suit is, but Mm. can we just say this at the start? You're a builder, and you're willing and prepared to build this suit. Yes. And I'm going to show you a picture Mm -hmm. now of a two-man Trojan Trojan horse horse. (laughs) with wheels. Well, that's incredible. Now, I is know that, we said no he, wheels. Did he draw that up? This is, is that a, Dean, is, I mean, are you thinking the two-person suit pretty similar to the picture? 
Uh, yeah, pretty similar to that. So how, how would, it have, would it have like a window at the front, like a Ned Kelly kind of slot that you'd look out of? Yeah, pretty much. Little so, slot, two holes. Hang on, can I ask Dean? Two person is one person in it and one person pushing it? No, I think just two people in it. Like one person's legs coming down near the front, the other person coming down near the back. Dean? Yeah, exactly. So right. It's, it's really so just the cool. power of two people pushing along. How much do you reckon it will weigh, Dean? Well, seeing I might use some light timbers for it. I'd recommend so. <laughs> <laughs> But um, maybe 40 kilos, something like that. So I, I reckon you're more than welcome to put wheels on it. I will yeah. break, I will waive the wheels rule for you, yep. Dean. No motor, though. No motor. We needed to. We needed to be human powered. Yeah. Because um, I just, I'd love the idea of them just propping themselves up and hovering as the motor just <laughs> takes them along. But no, it has to be um, leg powered. Dean, I mean, turning the Trojan horse from memory. You need trolley wheels. Yeah, the Trojan horse from memory was a very front backwards type of type of, yeah. um, of vehicle. How do you think you're getting around the turning? Um. Maybe trolley wheels is a good idea. Yep, yep. I mean, you're the builder, mate. Don't go off mine. It is a, it is a dirt track. I don't think trolley heavy, wheels are going to help you. No, you'll need heavy duty trolley style wheels. Yeah. So Cross like, country yeah. wheels, I think. Yeah. On a pivot. And the only other rule I'd put on it, Dan, is if, do you promise not to pack your suit? Because I assume you, you get there on the Saturday or the Sunday ahead of the race on the Monday. Would that be right? Yes. We just need you to swear you're not going to hide a bunch of soldiers in your horse that <laughs> sneak out at night and destroy all the other suits. Do you promise not to do that? Uh, I definitely promise not to do that. Dean, you're in. You're in, you're for in. sure. Oh, you're in. We've got a Trojan horse. horse. A custom-built Trojan horse. Thank you, mate. Well, we'll see you in three weeks from Monday, the 2nd of November. We'll see you out in the country town of Wedderburn. I just can't wait to see how he goes about trying Doesn't to manipulate. Doesn't that add a, just a level of majesty to the field now? Absolutely. Save your daddy driving you home. Our race that slows down the nation, Ham. 50 people inside horse suits at the Wedderburn horse racing track. If you listen to the show, uh, then right now, guess what? You might not have thought you were a member of a prestigious turf club, but you are. Just mm-hmm. by listening to this show, the people show, you're automatically a member of the Hamish Nanny Turf Club. Yep. Congratulations. Hey, we mentioned earlier, we're hovering around about 20 of the horses registered. We want to rip through yeah. a few more here because some what of the entries got? are fantastic. HamishNanny.com, we're going to still... Have entries come in. Maybe yeah. we close it by Friday, We're thinking I would say. Friday. We want to give people a sporting chance to talk to their mates, especially if you're in a two-person suit. $2,000 up for grabs um, uh, as the purse. Ham, Jordan Haynes, donkey suit. Great. Yep, he's in. I'm not going to nitpick on a donkey suit, although we did knock back a cow today. <laughs> Murray Camby, Ham, from yep. Point Cook in Victoria. He's sent a beautiful picture of him and his toddler uh, daughter on his back. He's in a horse suit. And it's very similar to the one that you own, that you're giving away. The cheapest you can buy. Yeah. You're in, Murray. You're in, Murray. Uh-huh. Jo- the jo- size of Farlap, <laughs> the wallet, the size of a small mouse. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, interesting that you brought up Farlap because John O'Moore, he's from ACT. Yeah. He's got his horse. He's got his suit. He's also in, and he's racing under the name Fartlap. <laughs> Great. <laughs> it's exactly where this event's at. And, uh, I mean, people that uh, might have been listening on the show would have heard Dean get in. Mm. He is personally building a two-man Trojan horse yep. on wheels. So a wooden Trojan horse with a little uh, slot that he can see out of through the horse's neck. Two guys can fit in it and run along, mm. and the, uh, the horse's legs have wheels on it. Unbelievable. The other good news I want to point out is... Mitch Grisbrook, Br- Grisbrook, his name is Ham. Sounds fake, but keep going. <laughs> He's going to make the track across to the small town in Victoria from West Perth. Great. So hats off to him. Yep, great. We need, he went to we stere- need a few more people from Western Australia. He went to Stereosonic in a horse suit yep. with his mate, and there was a race <laughs> on the day. Just an impromptu Just race? Just an impromptu race. Because a lot of the guys at Stereosonic mm. are fit, so mm. it would have been a sprint. Which he lost, and he'd like a chance for redemption. Of course. Yes, you're in, Mitch. And I think, I believe, one of our first Western Australian entrants. And I... Enjoy the Nullarbor. Um, from Woi Woi uh, and the North Shore, mm. Sylvie has given us a call here. Sylvie, mm. are you ready? Do you want to... Have you? I've got your application, but are you ready to race, Sylvie? Oh, yeah, I'm ready to race. And I just found out there's $2,000 prize money. Yes. Well, it's serious now. It really <laughs> yeah, is, it isn't is, it, Sylvie? Yeah, yeah. And look, we, we've only just organised the prize money yesterday. So the good thing about all these entrances, is mm. these are all people racing for the passion of racing. Yep, from the, the passion heart. of being part of the turf club and putting on a hell of a show mm. in the race that slows down in the nation the day before the cup. Sylvie, are you going for a one-person or a two-person suit? 
I'm going for a two-person suit. Why? Because they will get a, uh, a, a an advantage, you, Ham. You do get a head start a because head start. we recognise it's harder to run in a two-person suit, but mm. it is the more respected oh, form of horse yeah. suit. <laughs> Sylvie, who's in your suit with you? Um, it's my husband, Greg. Good on you. Now, is Greg uh, front, frontsies or backsies? Well, he wants to be fronts, but Everyone does. I don't. Yeah, I like it's nightmares of being in the rear yeah. in yeah. the front, so he, it's not he, really working for me. Yeah, is he, is he taller than you, Sylvie? He is taller than me, but yes. sometimes gets them the nod. Are you sewing your own suit, I've just read? I'm going to try. Not the head, though. No way, yeah. the head. So you buy um, the head and then go to Spotlight I'll, for the rest? Yeah, and I'm going to try and make it in the colours of my nationality, um, just like with the, I don't know, saddle or whatever you call it. Lovely. Yeah. Um, what nationality yeah. are we going for? Uruguay. Uruguay. Oh, right. First, I think I can safely say the first Uruguayan horse <laughs> yes. we've got in the race. We've got an Irish mammoth, which if you didn't hear that call is a long story. <laughs> Sylvie, <laughs> you and Greg are definitely coming. You're in the race. Love it, Sylvie. Well oh, done. Cool. I'm excited. Yes, well, good luck. I mean, obviously, go for some lightweight material for the rest of the suit because they're too great up for grabs. HamishDaddy.com. Like we mentioned, by the end of the show, we'll have a chat to the mayor of the town. I, yeah. I've just had a thought. I mean, you, you hear there Sylvie worried about Greg, her husband, going front or back. Have we talked about the rule of if you have to be in one piece as a two-person suit? Oh, yes. Like, if we officiated that rule? Yeah, if... if, if say Because I'm worried if Greg's half... up the front and he just nicks off on Sylvie. If the back half of a horse falls out, they will be disqualified. Or do you just... Does your time just count when the back crosses? When the oh, second yeah. piece of the horse nah, comes across? No, because I think if, if you or I... Oh, uh, we just split and uh, sprint. Yeah, yeah we just, we just <laughs> split immediately. Classic run. cheating. <laughs> <laughs> Again, it's kind of cheating you don't see in the Group 1 horse races, the <laughs> split and sprint. That's <laughs> Irish for Hame, before we head off today, it's good to be able to get back to the mayor of the town of Wedderburn. This is where we're going to have our race that slows down the nation. 50 people in horse suits, Ham. Running around the glorious Wedderburn racetrack, mm. Ando. Uh, we've got a temporary lease over the place. Yep. Uh, the event is open to all and sundry, everyone that can make it to the beautiful small town of Wedderburn. But, Ando, as we're finding out, so much stuff to organise. Yep. And it's not just us doing the organising. It's the town of Wedderburn, mm. and the leader of the town is Gav, the mayor. Gav, how are you going? I'm going very well, boys. How are you? Well, yeah, we're well, trying thanks, to keep Dave. all the balls in the air, mate, but there's just <laughs> there's a lot to do. Yeah, it certainly is. I see. What have we got? Three weeks. Three, Three weeks. weeks. Now you've got a you've got a community meeting tonight, don't you? <laughs> That's correct. Yep. How's um, that looking? Who's going to the community meeting? Well, hopefully a large cross section of the community, and there will be because everyone's so excited about this, yep. and of course. Everybody wants to be a part of it, mm-hmm. and everybody wants to help. That's and great. How do you feel, will the town hold up to the 20 million capacity that we've capped it at? Well, uh, has it gone up to that, has it? Well, we've ca- we're, gonna, we're just capping it. We know million. it won't go over that. Well, I tell you what, that's a poor effort. What about the three and a half other million Aussies that you've missed? <laughs> yeah. we're, we're permitting a skeleton staff to remain in capital cities to keep vital <laughs> services running for when the 20 right. million come oh, home sorry. from their okay. long weekend. <laughs> now, oh, yeah, you're, you're, you're ahead of it. Hey, <laughs> hey, Gav, you've got a lot of people coming uh, to the community meeting tonight, which is music to our ears because we wanted to float something past you. Now, right. not sure if you heard yesterday that um, there's a purse. We've put up a 2000 dollar purse for the winning horse first horse right. across the line um, okay. to make it a bit more of a rich you know it's not the richest race in the nation no. but now it's at least yes. on the scorecard we would like Correct. to add to that mm-hmm. something that i think is worth more than money hampers yeah um wondering if we could get a selection of hampers a first second and third place hamper mm. from local businesses within the community local produce Local oh, produce yeah, would be great. And um, what yep, kind of yep. businesses in Wedderburn may be able to contribute to the hamper? What we could do is we could use it with businesses that are local produce mm. around um, eucalyptus, around honey, yep, around yes. wine. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, there's hamper. three things I can think of. Two tickets to the uh, museum, supermarket museum. Can we chuck in a few, few free, free tickets, like a season pass to the supermarket museum? That's done. <laughs> <laughs> Great. This is why you so, go to the top, because you can get stuff it, done. That's it. I always say, don't talk to the block, talk to the butcher. <laughs>
<laughs> Gavin, um, we would love you to table this as, I think, priority number one is for us, ha- yeah. Hampers uh, tonight well, at the meeting. And the other thing we have to okay. tell you is we're working hard on a, bringing a royal to town. Yeah. Um, at the really? moment, maybe looking at a princess of a sort of a small Pacific island nation, mm. maybe Tonga, mm. maybe... Rarotonga. We're looking at mm. a couple of different nations, trying to get at least a member of the one of their royal families along. Now, does the hotel or the motel in town have either a presidential suite or, or a royal, royal suite. suite? I don't know. Actually, the motel's got a honeymoon suite. Oh, <laughs> could you reserve it for the royal? <laughs> I reckon that'd be good. That'd be terrific. Yeah. All right. Well, great. Put a, put a hold uh, on that for us. Hang on, hang on. I've got to work out what I'm committing to here. Yeah, I'm sure. committing to three hampers. Yep, yep. I'm committing to a... Uh, a season ticket to the museum. Yep. Super. And I'm committing to the honeymoon suite at the motel for a royal. Yes, yeah, that's, that's right. <laughs> that's right. That's, that's all we needed, mate. That's perfect. Well, yeah, look, mate. look, I tell you what, fellas. Mm. Short of that, mm. the master bedroom at the mayor's house is available. <laughs> oh, <laughs> when the royals <laughs> met the mayor. It's a beautiful no, no, book. No, no, no. Hey, hey, hang on. No, no, not doesn't include me. <laughs> no, 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 no. But you'd obviously meet her to hand over the keys. Sorry, that's, I assumed it was <laughs> just give more. Her a towel. I assumed it was more you giving her some, you know, hot, hot water and lemon and honey drink before bed, and then you, you know, you move out to the barn or something. Yeah, yeah. Mrs. I've told you fellas before. Whatever I can do to please you, I will do it. You're the best, yeah, you're the best. Thank you very much, mate. We'll chat to you soon. Good on you. Good Thanks, luck mate. at the meeting tonight. Bye-bye. All we got time for this afternoon. <laughs> God, I can't wait to get to Wedderburn. Half the field is now set yep. for the race that slows down the nation. We- Go to hamishdaddy.com if you want to register as a horse. You just heard, as well as the $2,000 you will win if you are the winning horse, mm. you will get a hamper including... Not and but not restricted to eucalyptus <laughs> products, wine, and a season pass. To honey the, products and honey products and a season pass to the to the supermarket museum in the town of Wedderburn. <laughs> pretty good, pretty good, pretty guys. good incentive. Hamishdaddy.com. Because once we lock up our fifty horses, Ando, that's yep. it. We can't allow any more horses. When we really have to catch up on what we're going to do with the royal and with which one we're going to get tomorrow. If you've got a horse suit, if you've got a two man horse suit or a one man horse suit, you could be one of our fifty horses. Hamishdaddy.com. Follow the links to be a horse because. We have a lot of entries, and as we said, once the pile has been worked through, it's done. And any other suggestions, head there as well. Of course, everyone out there is invited to come and watch the race. We'll catch you tomorrow, everyone. Have a good one. Our race that slows down the nation. 50 people in horse suits running around the small, actually regular-sized horse track in the smallest town here we could find in Wedderburn. It's going to be amazing, Ando. It's a free event. People come, embrace the race. It's going to be just spectacular. Yep. Um, Probably one of the greatest sporting, sporting moments this country has ever seen. Mm-hmm. And it's about to get a little bit better. We're over half the field is, we've, has been settled. Um, I think we're sitting at around about 28 horses confirmed. Yeah. We'll be now. into the 30s by the end of the show. We're going through a lot. Yeah. Um, and boy, are we impressed by some of the outfits. The outfits are key for us. We've got, I mean, we've said early, early on, you have to have a horse suit. It can be a one-person horse suit. Mm. We prefer a two-person, but we understand they're harder to come by, but that is the more noble form of racing. Mm. But the one-person horse suits have really blown us away too. The <laughs> quality is outstanding. Yesterday on the show, we had a Trojan horse. Yeah. Guys, building a Trojan horse with wheels <laughs> to bring to the race. Now, there is a $2,000 purse plus a hamper. Yeah. So it's not like it's, that's not a bad investment. No, no, exactly. <laughs> um, <laughs> when I mentioned earlier on that celebs have come out and asked to run in it, yeah. I didn't know about whoever you're talking about now. I was referring to the one we're going to discuss after five. It's banned. It's a ban. This is not ban related. Yeah. And I've been contacted by the ACT Brumbies. Okay. Okay. They are super rugby comp. Yep. They obviously have a horse as their mascot. It's Brumby Jack. Yep. Uh, many people know and love Brumby Jack. Mm-hmm. He's a lovable horse. He's a reliable horse. He, yeah. he's, you know, he's good. He can organise the team well. Yep, he, he gets he's the game on time. <laughs> <He's> a positive <laughs> horse. Yeah. He always has a good attitude. <laughs> now, we were contacted um, by the social media coordinator yep. for the Brumbies, Bill. Mm-hmm. He sent in an email, but Bill's not going to run. Bill's not, he, he's, by his own admission, he's not the fittest fella. Sure. We've got someone else that works at the Brumbies there, Ando, mm-hmm. who's about to join us. On the line, would you please welcome a man that only retired last year yeah. from the top level, former Wallaby, <gasps> Pat McCabe. Oh, Pat, Pat how are you? <laughs> welcome. Thanks, guys. How are you? Thank Don't you. tell me, Hab. Pat, are you, are you willing to run in the Brumby Jack outfit? I'm willing. Um, it certainly probably wasn't on the bucket list until about an hour ago. <laughs> Get a bigger bucket. <laughs> Get a bigger bucket, <laughs> Pat. You've been dobbed in. Uh, did, dobbed you, in yeah. did you hear about the hamper? And that's what came, made you uh, a scamper towards the, <laughs> towards the prize. Because 2000 bucks if you win, Pat. 
It's 2000 bucks if you win. And a hamper. Wow. Yeah, I really love the sound of the hamper. Yeah, I'm yeah. I'm really well, intrigued by that. I mean, it's full of local produce from the town of Wedderburn. There's a season pass in there yeah. to uh, a key tourist attraction they have in the town, which is the Supermarket Museum. Mm. So imagine <laughs> yeah. uh, imagine being able to be in a room that accurately recreates what it was like to shop in the 20s. <laughs> <laughs> now imagine doing that a for a season <laughs> every day. Do you have a family, Pat? Do you have kids? Uh, no, I'm engaged actually. All right. Oh, well, I mean, we'll see. Don't if worry we can... about a wedding gift, mate. This is a beaut. <laughs> uh, we know where the honeymoon will be. Straight to the museum. <laughs> hey, Pat. I mean, once a person retires from an elite level, do they keep running? Do they stay fit, or um, do you need? To... Have you gone to a better paddock, so to speak? Uh, um... I'm probably not in full-blown office body mode yet, but yeah. I'm certainly not probably at race weight yeah, sure. uh, quite so yet. So just, I've got a big couple of weeks ahead. Yeah, you do. Um, now, did you ever train? Like, did you ever... Sometimes you see, like, top athletes wearing the, like, the vests and stuff, like a weight vest. Did mm. you ever... Like, have you got experience training with a heavier load on your body like a horse suit will be? Um, I've certainly worn a vest. I don't know that I've worn an enormous horse head. <laughs> uh, running around, so that'll be a new experience. Yeah, that's it. Just when you thought you had been to the top level, now we find there's one level above that. <laughs> well, Pat, thank you very much for joining us, mate. We look forward to seeing you on November we, 2nd. Do, we do need to point out it's a non-contact race. <laughs> yeah. Just, so we do get other people still keen to enter and, and run against a former Wallaby. Pat, mate, we're honoured to have you run. I'm shocked and so excited. Representing, awesome. representing the Brumbies, yeah. ACT Brumbies, uh, Brumby Jack will be in the race, <laughs> yeah. driven by Pat McKay. <laughs> Fantastic, man. Thanks to you very much, mate. Thanks, guys. Thank Cheers, you mate. Hamish and is brilliant. Hamish and Eddie driving you home. And this exciting, our race that slows down the nation, November 2nd, Ham. The small town of Wedderburn, 50 people in horse suits. Well played on the trumpet again, Ham. Racing around the country track. And as we just alerted to people at the top of the hour there... New things are afoot today, and, and we've had to go into negotiation mode. Well, the floodgates have well and truly opened here. As mm. we've said, we are cutting off. Uh, we'll have all the horses set by Friday. So if you do want to be a horse, yeah. you're welcome to get your application in. The pile has grown. Yeah. There's well over 100 horses that have applied now, and we have to be strict on who we let in, who we allow to be one of the horses, people in the horse suits that are running in this race, whether it's a one-man mm. or a two-man horse suit. But Ando... Mm. One this of Australia's favourite bands. This is interesting. Contact the show, Birds of Tokyo, responsible for these songs. I just met you, I can read your thoughts. We march to the They said, and uh, it came through their management, that uh, Glenn, who's in the band, he plays keys, he wants to run in the race. Yep. Now, he's bypassed the registration, hasn't he, Adam? This is We're getting a little bit of this. We had our mate Aaron <laughs> yeah. also want to run. Yep. And we pressed him a little bit, mm. and he said he's not doing it because he thought it was 40 metres, but it's <laughs> 800 metres. So he, he was out. But this is the thing. People are trying to just go straight in to us. And is that it, fair? It's not because it's a people's show. And hence, we got our negotiating caps on, and we said, yep. well, if Birds of Tokyo are happy to come and play at the event for everyone, for the masses, and yep. we're capping it at 20 million people that are allowed to come and watch the race. We will allow then mm. one of the band members to be a horse. We believe a satisfactory deal has been met. They shook hands earlier today. And so joining us on the line is Kenny. Congratulations, Kenny. You have a band member that is in the race. This is fantastic news indeed. <laughs> now, Kenny, your vocals, but Glenn, uh, who's on the synth and does a bit of keys and vocals as well, he's, he's the one that wants to run. <laughs> That's it. This is, he's, he's the guy that is going to be the horse of the day, I believe. Fantastic. First question is, uh, how come you weren't interested in fielding a two-man uh, suit, suit or, having said that, a five-man suit with <laughs> all five birds in the suit? Well, to be honest, Glenn is by far the most athletic in the band, so he's oh, our best chance. You've picked he's your our only hope, really. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, Kenny, obviously... Um, you guys are going to play probably after the race. I would. We'd think. love you to. I mean, or maybe yeah, before, but well, I reckon after is good. What would you prefer? Would Glenn be nervous and not concentrating on the performance, or is he too puffed after? What would you guys prefer? 
Oh, well, you know, Glenn's a sort of, sort of constant professional, so he's up to the challenge. I mean, you guys could put him through his paces and make him run and then play and see, see what the outcome is. Yeah, see yeah. If we, if we could somehow, if we could give him a camelback or something just so he could like, have a drink during the set. <laughs> if you've just tuned in, we're talking to Birds of Tokyo, Kenny the front man. Uh, they're going to come play at the race that slows down the nation in Wedderburn. Another reason, it's a free event, another reason to come and watch. Well, uh, Kenny, is Glenn around? <laughs> Can we speak to the horse himself? Absolutely, mate. I'm yeah, pretty right. Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Glenn, you're in. All those in, in favour say nay. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> hey, Glenn, exciting stuff. Have you got yourself a suit yet? No, I haven't got. A, I haven't been fitted yet. I'm yeah. looking forward to seeing what it looks like. I haven't yeah. been fitted. It was a custom suit. <laughs> I'm hoping so. Yeah, it's like, it's, like, it's like Kathy Freeman's running suit now. I would love a skin tight one. Um, Glenn, two thousand dollars is the purse plus a hamper. Ooh. There's hampers for first. I love that the hamper got your attention, didn't it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, do you... sure, cash comes and goes, but you don't get a hamper every day. And there's no, no, not way every you, day. no way you could buy a hamper for money. No, no, we, no my, we... mom, my mom would finally be happy with me if I won a hamper. <laughs> All the music finally paid off. Knowing that this, um, you know, that that prize is now up for grabs for you, what is the likelihood of you doing any training in the next two um... and a half weeks before the the big race? Uh, I've, I've been watching a lot of like running on YouTube, so they look like they do it pretty well. Yeah, so I'm so just going to do what those guys on YouTube do. <laughs> okay, so you yeah, know yeah. the technique. You've got the technique. <laughs> you are entering in the one-man horse suit category. Fantastic. If you guys are playing straight afterwards, you, do you have any qualms about just running straight up on stage and playing in your horse suit? No, in fact, that would be excellent. Yeah. Just, if we can just keep that a secret from the guys, and if I can do that, <laughs> yeah, that would yeah, be yeah. terrific. Like, if I could recommend sort of Velcro hoofs so yeah. you can just rip yeah. them off yeah. and get your hands free for the keyboard. <laughs> That'll be already yeah. That'll be fantastic. Glenn, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks to Kenny as well and the fellows from Birds of Tokyo. They'll be there on November 2nd, have the race that slows down the nation. This I'm is thrilled. huge. That we've got. Those are Tokyo playing <laughs> and running. <laughs> and running. Not every day you can say that. Davis and Andy driving you home. Birds of Tokyo and Glenn Ham, the keyboard player for you. Birds of Tokyo, will be running in the race and they'll be performing at the race that slows down the nation. Embrace the race. Come along. It's, uh, it's available to everyone. 20 million people actually capped. 20 million limit. It's free. It's obviously a free event. Bring the family. Glenn's going to be there. <laughs> <laughs> As we just said, the <laughs> keyboardist from Birds of Tokyo, come and say hi to Glenn. <laughs> the whole band's going to be there. Well, the whole band's going to be there. Play, yeah. Glenn's going to be running. Yeah, Glenn's running. Uh, and might win. Yep. Yeah. At he, this stage, no he reason he breaks to his leg and we have to put him down, <laughs> they'll Ugh, be without a keyboard be player. I mean, the, the thing is, though, I mean, um, it is an 800 metre race. Mm. If you're not a runner, that could take... I mean, the difference between first and last could be up to five or six minutes. If Birds of Tokyo are playing next and Glenn's on the other side of the track vomiting because he was just gone too hard too soon yeah. and might have had a few too many sprites. Are we thinking sprites. too far? No, nah, I love it. I love the endurance aspect. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Hey, Mission Addy, back to drive you home. Hey, we're putting on the race that slows down the nation. So exciting. People, thank you very much. And people are embracing the race. It's great. And uh, we're trying to gather the field at the moment. It's 50 people in horse suits running around a rural track of Wedderburn. A free event. Bird of Tokyo are going to play. The Keys player is running in it. We were having an idea about bringing a royal along. It'd be nice. Steal a couple of themes from every big horse race in the world. They send, tend to have a royal come along. Well, let's look, for example, Ando, at the Emirates Melbourne Cup. Yes. That's the race that stops the nation. Yep. It's the day after ours. Yep. That's why our race is slowing down the nation. Yep. They have had... Didn't they have that princess? Princess Sarah Phillips. You kissed she, her. No, I didn't. You I were didn't. telling everyone you did. No, I, I, didn't, I didn't do that either. Jack, am I making that up? Or... <laughs> Uh, it, yeah, it was used in the same sentence. I kissed and Princess Sarah Phillips. I said I kissed one of her friends. When Which I'll... we struggled to verify. <laughs> Still, we weren't allowed near it. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> rightly so. You're on her security's watch list. It was a struggle. <laughs> but um, it, anyway, they had a princess. They had a princess. Now, there's always royals from other countries coming to the Melbourne Cup. Uh, the Emirates Melbourne Cup have um, Royal Ascot. Got, I know the one. <laughs> Royal Ascot. The Queen goes every year. Yep. Um, we thought we wanted a royal, proving harder than we thought. We lo- we put the bar very low. The mm. King of Tonga, we have had some good back and forth with. Yep. He is understandably busy yes. as a king of a nation. Mm, fair enough. We might be prepared to lower the bar. Our race that slows down the nation. 50 brave people inside horse costumes 
Race. Suits. <laughs> suit, sorry, rather than costume. Uh, yeah, suit. I mean, it's Did a, you speak during playing the trumpet? It's a tough trick. It's like being a ventriloquist <laughs> and talking while having a glass of water, but I was able to play my bugle yep. and quickly correct you on suits or costumes. Yeah. Here's the thing, though, Ando. Horse suit racing mm. is a top-tier sport. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, sport of kings is often what horse racing is called. Yep. Sport of gods? I mean, yep. what's above kings? Yeah, Emperors? Gods. gods. Sport of gods. Yeah. It's the sport it's of gods, gods. horse yeah. suit racing. <laughs> racing yeah. Damn it, we've already made the logo. <laughs> <laughs> is it too late to, too late to squeeze <laughs> sport of gods on there? <laughs> but it is the sport of gods, yeah. Ando, and we will have 50 plus of those gods racing around mm. in horse suits mm. and... A crowd of thousands, like we're, we're al- hoping. I mean, we're capping it at twenty million, but we already, though, seriously do have an indication that there will be some thousands of people converging mm. on Wedderburn, and they're ready. They're able to take it. They've got a hotel, motel. They've got campgrounds. They're yeah. an RV friendly town, and you can just make a day trip. Bring make an a day trip. And if you're listening to this show, mm. you're a member of the Turf Club, yep. which guarantees you access. To the track. It's mm-hmm. members only, mm-hmm. but good news for you is by listening to the show, you are a member. If you're coming along, please wear race wear. Yes. Certainly from the waist up. You and I are getting an augmented suits made up so we can have shorts as well as kind of, I don't know, something very smart. Oh, top. right. I thought we were going to go for like the grey morning suits, like the tails, mm. but with board shorts. Oh, okay. Oh, are you thinking we have fabric shorts? Yeah. Like, like a suit shorts? Yeah. What do you think? It'd be hot and a nuisance. Yeah. Okay. Well, can we get grey bodies? Yes, we can. (laughs) That is how the big decisions get made around here. And the reason we have to make decisions like that so quickly and with such a level of thought is because we've got a lot of decisions to make for this. We're putting on the whole bloody horse race, Mm. Ando, Mm. and we've got 50 horses in it. So there's a lot of things to organise. Now, the one area we're lacking, it's not the prize money. We've got two grand as yet unsponsored, but two grand is the purse. I'd love a sponsor. We've got three... (laughs) Hampers yep. that will be given to first, second, and third. Those are sponsored. They'll be provided by local businesses of the small town that we're taking yeah, over. There was a kind of a vibe from the mayor that we were reimbursing them, wasn't there? Was or, there? I, I don't know. <laughs> no, 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 I'm definitely under the impression those okay, have been no, given okay, to okay. us as a gesture of okay, goodwill good, from the good. town. Okay, great. Uh, you and I will hopefully get the keys to the city yeah. <laughs> after this is all gone and done well. So we're that, taken care of. That's just more of a side That's issue. just more of a side <laughs> wish. But one thing we don't have is a royal. Yeah. To attend the race. And you're nothing, you're not on the racing circuit unless you have a royal. It's been tough. Tougher than we thought. Um, King, uh, King of Tonga is out. He's out. I've just been told officially he's yeah. busy. It was a good He's in Tonga. Yep. He's being the king. He's enjoying Tonga. He loves it. He's the king. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. He's, he's, he's colloquially and officially known as the king of Tonga, <laughs> not like a king of Mykonos. That's just what Nick Giannopoulos was calling himself. <laughs> For he's a while the, there. He's the, he's the <laughs> real king of Tonga. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He's the real king. So he's going to stay there, which is fine. Um, we had a chat to a princess of Monaco, I think. Uh, I don't know if she was the princess of Monaco, <laughs> but she was related. She was the cousin of. Similar. She was in the vein of Princess of Monaco. <laughs> She's out. We've talked to two Polynesian princesses. They yep. are out. They've yep, got prior engagements. Yep. It's so we go okay. There was maybe another, we're not getting a king or a princess. There was another small island that we talked to, and they just seemed like they were very fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, we just couldn't get anyone online. Well, they just... They weren't listening to the show. Yeah, they just seemed a little bit... And that's okay. They're an island of about 600 people in the middle of the Pacific. They've yeah. got other stuff to do. Exactly. We thought they'd feel at home in an island, like a, a town of less than 600 We people. thought it'd be an easy one-for-one swap, but no. Because <laughs> no, no. a lot of these small islands, you have to get somewhere else to get on a plane to get to Australia. Mm. Here's the thing, though. 131060, we did this the other day on the show, but we were after it. We, were, we wanted a top-tier rule. We yep. wanted a king or a princess or whatever. 131060... We are fiercely relaxing the rules. Yes. On the royal. Fiercely. You will now be our, you can be our royal in quotation marks. Yeah. You're, you can be our person with heavy royal ties. Yeah. But we would love it if you have some Just loose have... association with a royal. Some loose link, hopefully by blood, to a royal. Is blood too much to ask? We Just hope not. some loose link. 13, 10, 60. We'll take your calls after this. But if... Like, are we going to decide? Will we just yeah, go? Let's just, I mean, we'll, so we should get through. Let's just lock this off for the next eight minutes. It's first in best dress. <laughs> the Royal will be decided next. <laughs> the one thing we, we don't have locked off, though, Ando, as yet, mm. is a Royal attendee to yes. the race. Now, we know it's a very long way uh, for a Royal to come to fly in to get to the race, but it'll be an absolutely cracking day. Mm. Um, some are saying it's the sporting highlight of the year. And we've had the Mayor of the town on this very show Offering his house for yeah, the royal to stay at. The guest room at the mayor's house. And 
when I when Prince Harry came out, yep, saw him do a bunch of bore, boring things. Yeah, that's true. I saw him visit, and his days like, were very full. His days were full, but he was doing a lot of rubbish stuff. I saw him visit like a, a meteorology type. He visited a weather station. Weather station at one point, and there was come a guy back, going, Harry. If you're listening, come, come back, back and we'll get you. Well, yeah, and there's a guy going a better day. See this dish. No. Yeah, that measures the wind. Oh, and Prince off, Harry's off going. With his head. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the prince. I'll do what I want. All I'm saying is this is a better event. Yeah. And I don't think it should be shirked. In it, royal circles, this is the dream gig or yeah, exactly, horse race. Exactly. But because we've already spoken to the King of Tonga, he's mm. busy. Two um, Polynesian princesses, they're also flat out. Because it's only two and a half weeks away, we've made it. Would we organise free drinks for the. Um, That's great. Yep, the, free drinks for the royal. For the royal. And you get a sash. Would love a sponsor. Get a Drink sash. Sponsor. Get a sash. <laughs> <laughs> Still a few sponsorship spots for grabs. Get a sash that tells everyone you are the race's official royal. Yep. And crown? um or just yep. sash. Yep, crown and crown we'll sash behind the scenes. Drinks. But we very much relax the rules yep. of the royal just to squeeze one in and commit to one now. Tim, yeah. what's your connection yeah. to a royal? Are you a royal? Ahoy boys. Ahoy, Ahoy you, Tim. Tim. Thank you for using the preferred telephonic greenie kill of the show. Can you be our royal? Well, I think so. My mother hmm. has probably three qualities. One, she has a tiara. Yep. Yep. She was once show queen of Forbes in New South Wales. That's and today she's 86 and looks incredibly like the queen. So, you're, <laughs> so because she was the show, show queen, queen, that yeah. makes you the prince, doesn't yeah. it? Correct. The prince of the Forbes show jurisdiction. Is that show still going? Um. Not too sure on that. It was uh, way sixty odd years ago. That's all right. A lot of kings and queens have I mean, lost their I mean, <laughs> lost if, their if, if we lands were, over time. If we were introducing you loosely as the Prince of Forbes, <laughs> that sounds yeah. good. That sounds fine. Yeah, and, and obviously, if you bought a picture of your mum, <laughs> your mum, <laughs> that would be... people mistook it for the Queen. All right, Tim, hang on the line. You're a chance. <laughs> You're definitely um, a chance. Barb, do you have yes. a link to royalty? Yes, I do. Ahoy. Ahoy. Oh, thank you, Barb. Ahoy to you, Barb. The royal ahoy. Yeah. <laughs> also, Barb, are you the royal? No, no. Unfortunately, I'm just, you know, removed by a few degrees. Tell us the degrees. Well, I took shorthand for the King of Tonga once when he came to Melbourne to work. So you could <laughs> okay. be technically a royal assistant. I, I was the royal scribe. Oh, oh okay. That's so it's really ooh. good. So ooh. do you still, I mean... Still writing letters? Did you <laughs> recognise the handwriting? No, well, we lost we lost contact. Yeah, sure. <laughs> busy. Fair enough, Barb. He's busy. And you might have been <laughs> hanging out with the last one because the new king we've been trying to get a hold of, he's, yeah. he's um, Tupu yeah. the Sixth. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I think I think it might have been a few ago. I think the one that I worked for did die. He was a prince at the time. Yeah, too, right. You might have been way. four or five. So royal scribes, <laughs> nice. <laughs> Thank you, Barb. I mean, that's definitely a chance. What are you leaning towards between Tim and Barb? Yeah, they're both Forbes? good. Yeah, or a royal <laughs> scribe. <laughs> they're, they're both loosely linked. We don't certainly don't have anything in the bloodlines. I mean, yeah. if we were. Track back a few days when we were thinking, oh, we might get the King of Tonga. Yep. To get the the two kings ago scribe <laughs> for Tonga. It, yeah. it, is, it is a downgrade, but having yeah. talked to Barb, she's lovely. So yes, that yeah. certainly adds a few other weights yeah. to the other side of the scale. Kim, tell us, have you, a, have you got a link to royalty? I have a great link to royalty. Okay. My half-sister was Prince Philip's PA in Buckingham Palace. Great. So okay. we're really hitting a lot of the admin <laughs> <laughs> circle here of the royals. Yeah, exactly. Have you worked for a royal? Could have been the phone topic. Have you oh, been a Kim, royal you're administrator? St- you're on the list. Half Braden. Sister, sorry, I missed that one. Half sister's PA to Prince, Prince Philip. Philip. Which, is, which is high up. He's, an, he's married to Liz. Yes. That's great. He would have, he would have easily met the Queen. The, Prince the Philip. Sister. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Prince Philip probably meets her every now and again for a handshake before they go to bed in separate quarters. <laughs> Braden. You linking to we've got a link to royalty. Ahoy, fellas. Ahoy, Ahoy. Braden. Are you our royal? Listen, I don't have a uh, technical link, but I did once meet Freddie Prince Jr. <laughs> okay, you're They're out. They're getting Braden. sloppier. <laughs> Thanks for calling the show, Braden. They are getting sloppier. <laughs> Deborah. Ahoy, hi, Mish and Andy. Deb, are you our royal? Oh, I certainly am. My last name is Royal. That's a guy. Okay. Sloppy we did, still. We did okay. say we'd relax the rules. All right. Um, Break to think about it. Break to think about it. Back in a few minutes with the announcement. (laughs) Thanks, everyone. See you in a sec. Hey, we wanted a royal to attend the event. All good uh, races have a a royal, someone to attend, and we really relaxed the rules on royals. 
Tim and Barb were the ones that really stood out for us. Well, we wanted to have one role, but we couldn't, we couldn't split them. We have a condition for Tim, though. Tim, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Can you explain to everyone your link to royalty? Okay, well, if you got a stamp from the post office and held it next to my mother's head, mm. it would yeah. look identical to the Queen. She's, she looks a lot like the Queen, and in the past she won... She um, was show queen of Forbes back in the 1950s. Yep, fantastic. Tim, she was the queen he... of Forbes, making you the prince of Forbes. Mm. Uh, I'm not going to put the word former in there for yeah. me. If you've won it once, you get it yeah. forever. <laughs> Tim, what are the chances of bringing your mum along? Well, I was, I was thinking that. Um, I think there's a good chance. I'll do the road trip, Melbourne, Wagga, Wagga, the races... And and get her there. <laughs> that's she, a lot of driving, uh, Tim. That's a royal that, convoy. That, that's a, that, that, she, she, her, her, and the Queen have never been seen in the same room. I know that. For a fact. <laughs> okay, oh, Tim, oh, you're in. Tim, you're Tim, in. You've and got it. it. Obviously, obviously, you have to <laughs> run it by y- 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 your mum because we'll she has a, to do a road trip from Wagga. We'll get a sash for both of you. Yeah. Um, and now we'll try and put on the website when you'll be passing through the towns <laughs> on the way, so people in those towns can come out and wave to the royal motorcade. We'll also send you out two little flags, actually, Tim. With yep. the, the race that slows down mm. the nation logo on them, so you can pop them on the front of your car, mm. so it can look like an official motorcade. Five short hour, thing. Five hour track, track it's going to be, him. Five hours from Wagga Wagga to Wedderburn, not too bad, actually. It's I just, thought, thought it was going to be more than that, but Tim, There's good certainly luck. people driving a lot more that weekend to get to the race. Thanks, Tim. Bob. Yeah. <laughs> Bob, you were once the scribe for the King of Tonga. The Royal Scribe, yep. yes. Yes, a former Royal <laughs> Scribe. Former like, Royal Scribe. I like the idea that on your sash, Barb, we can have the word former, very, very small, and yep. the word scribe, very, very small, and the word royal, enormous. <laughs> <laughs> and we would bloody love to have you along as one of our royals, Barb. Oh, I'd bloody love to come. <laughs> now, similarly to uh, kind of with the Queen, Prince Philip kind of, like a bad smell hangs on. Do you have someone in your life that would like to come along as your plus one that we'd pay oh, no yes. attention to, but, um, but would I, definitely be your shadow? I have a royal cohort. All right. I could bring a, him too. A husband? Yep. I do. Fantastic. Yeah, great. great. Bring Barb. your Prince Philip. Okay, bring your equivalent of Prince Philip. <laughs> now, we're we still... need to talk to the, the guys that are building the royal box to make yeah. a bit more room in it. Look, if it's if it's not necessarily the royal a royal box, they'll um, it'll be a small part of the footy club. Yep, and there's a headquarters. Yeah. It could just be a few chairs against the wall, but it's certainly compared to the other cover available. Yeah. It's the, of a royal standard and free drinks for for the royals. Free drinks for royals. Um, would love a sponsor. Anyone in a royal sash <laughs> can get a free drink from our sponsor. very generous sponsor, <laughs> who we look forward to meeting in person if and when they eventuate. Hey, Mission Andy. Our race that slows down the nation, happening in Wedderburn. Very tiny town in the northwest side of Victoria, just to be uh, beyond the South Australian border and the New South Wales border. Birds of Tokyo are going to play. Yep. I loved the vibe. They came to us. Uh, Glenn wants to run. Yep. And uh, we said, yeah, if you play, Glenn runs. It was a great negotiation. And he's going to run and then run up onto stage and play. Because I think, <laughs> right. I mean, if the race is at about five, I've yeah. got no issue with Birds of Tokyo playing the next couple of tracks. <laughs> just to see me up there in his horse suit. At five o'clock, just to see if he can still keyboard while he's panting in a horse suit. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, do get down and see it. I reckon it'd be nice to get someone else involved. Music-wise? Uh, music-wise. Sure. Yeah. Um, but Who do you hey, want me to call? Uh, Tell you what, why don't I just put the feelers out, mate? <laughs> you never do any of this stuff. What's that? Who you, got you Julian Assange? Not you, I don't reckon. Nah, but you didn't really get me Jeff Price either. <laughs> we just both got lucky that they were doing promo. No, I'll put the feelers out. I have a read a beat magazine tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and just chuck it out to a couple of bands. I'll get on the blower. Talk to Michael Gudinski. If you can. See what's good. happening. Yeah, yeah. Give Molly a text. <laughs> Who's hot? Who's <laughs> touring? Do yourself a favour. <laughs> hey, we've got to get all our horses in line, though. We are around just over 35. Yep. Been adding some uh, off air. We've had, well, there is, I mean, as soon as we've got the full field of 50 yep. horses and we, we know who's in each horse suit and what different characteristic each horse has. We will put them up on the website too so people can have a sweep on the day. This is unique. What do we got? Comes from Nick and he puts himself forward as a jockey. Okay. He will need a horse? Well, yes. He wants to be carried by one of his mates, um, piggyback style, Yep. by one of his mates. He joins us now. Your friend, his name is Stuart, Nick. Ahoy, boys. Ahoy, yes, to you. Yes. Ahoy, Nick. This is the first request of this nature we've had. Um, let's talk about Stuart, who's going to be the horse. Mm. Does he know about about this? Uh, yes, he does. It's not a surprise. He's well aware. Okay. And has he got the suit? 
Uh, he has ordered it, yes. Okay, so fantastic. Way. Yeah, lovely. Um, with the, as far as Stuart goes, obviously he's strong man. He's going to be have to have to carry you. Um, are you guys both aware though that if the jockey falls off the horse, a horse cannot win without a jockey? Oh, that's fine. We're we're great with balance. <laughs> okay, 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 that's good okay. one of the key components. Well, I mean, I suppose. Look, I like it. I like it. I'll say that off the top, Nick. I yeah. like. I like the idea of you on Stuart's back mm. in the horse race. For people that have not exactly heard how this race will run, the people in the single man horse suits uh, will start and have to do a full lap of the track. Yep. Whereas the two man horse suits sort of start halfway round. Yes. And everyone starts at the same time. So. I guess the question is, is you on Stuart's back, are you a one-man horse suit mm. or are you a two-man outfit? I'm tempted to put you in the two-manners. Yeah. If you weigh above yeah, you, 65 kilos. You're a midget, Nick? Uh, I'm not a midget. Okay. What do you and, weigh, Nick? Uh, I'm, I'm happy to say 75 kilos. Yep. Yeah. All right, then you're a two-man. Yeah, I think that's bad. enough of a handicap. And guess what, Nick? You're in. You're in. Fantastic. Thanks. And this is just, just, just didn't want to get done over by a 42 kilo man in <laughs> <laughs> and a 200 kilogram giant yeah, that would exactly. sprint around and would not notice he had him on his and back. And you effectively to Sydney's backpack or something having a beer as he just charges across the line and takes out the $2,000 purse as well as the best hamper of the three. Nick, Nick no, that's fantastic, mate. Um, Nick, are you going to make a, a weekend of it or do you think you'll day trip it? Whereabouts are you in Australia? Uh, we're in we're in uh, around the Altham area, so we're still kind of deciding. But uh, now that we're in, I think we'll be up for the weekend. Yeah, oh, yeah you'll jump sure. up for the weekend. Make sure you get up and have a look at the supermarket <laughs> museum in town and various eucalyptus um, businesses. <laughs> <laughs> is one thing that's not getting a lot of a uh, lot of airtime at the moment, but I'm, eucalyptus is a big industry around Wedderburn, so there's bound to be an oil shop or a pressery <laughs> we around, <laughs> around you. Go and it. see the eucalyptus leaves being pressed live. <laughs> Have a go yourself. Nick. Jump in the barrel, <laughs> squash the eucalyptus leaves, none bring of, the family. None of that is confirmed as being available, Nick, but thank you, bud. It's a yeah, yeah, text here from Dan who works at the pressery. Yeah, he said, tell Nick to come and have a word to me. You know worry. <laughs> Our race that slows down the nation, uh, 50 athletes, well, you're probably being a bit generous, 50 people <laughs> in horse suits ah. racing around a country track. Everyone's invited. Come along, watch. Birds of Tokyo playing. Well, These guys running in the race. You're Pat a- McCabe. Yeah, Pat McCabe, the Wallaby, yep. uh, former Wallaby, only retired last year. He's running yep. in a mascot outfit. People are coming from everywhere. From the Brumbies, yeah. And if you listen to the show, you're a member of the Hamish and Andy Turf Club already. Mm -hmm. Probably the only turf club you're a member of. Maybe it's not, but Mm. easily the most prestigious. Yes. So use your membership wisely. (laughs) Come to the race. We should work out. Or at least listen for free. In future weeks, we should work out what the turf club membership gets people. Yep. I know there was talk of getting a laminated one. Yeah. It's Jack's shaking his head. I yeah. mean, we're thinking yeah. the, to send it the out sheer scale <laughs> of having to do the lamination. Yeah. Look, we might have them at the track. Yeah. So if you turn up to the track, we've got a box of laminated Getting membership more cards. more head shakes. Jack's giving it a shrug. And a me- huge no deal from out here. No, no, no. Now, that, could, that might be a few thousand, <laughs> let alone, you know, a much higher number for just people saying, hey, what I'm What did listening. that aside have? Ando. Uh, I've got another application for someone that wants to be a horse. Mm-hmm. Uh, you do have to apply to be a horse if you want to be one of the people in the horse suits. We've only got, what, 15 or so to go. We're very nearly close it off the field. Yeah. But I wanted to bring this one to your attention before we lock down the final field, because we're closing in on 40 out of the 50 horses that have been decided. Mm-hmm. We had a guy on, remember, a Tommy who won the stall gift in 2010. Rascal's Redemption is his name. The horse's name is Rascal's Redemption because he was accused of cheating. Yep. Uh, and when we probed him on it, he didn't he deny He did not it. deny <laughs> it. He was accused of pretending he was a worse runner than he was. Yep. Then he got a huge handicap given to him yep. in the stall gift and he cruised home and won by about two and a half hours. <laughs> <laughs> and over a 120 <laughs> metre sprint, that's a good margin good win. to win by. Yeah. Ando, can you imagine my delight when I'm looking through the entrance this morning? Mm. Does the name Murray Goodwin mean anything to you? No. It's okay if it doesn't. No. He won the stall gift this year. He's the current champion. Really? Of the stall gift and an Olympic hopeful. <laughs> and has applied to be in the race. Jeez. I mean, he'd be easily our most acclaimed runner. You would think so. Yeah. Now, the question is, can a man that's that good enter the race? Gee, this is tough, well, isn't it? I don't t- want to discourage anyone. I mean, he's a to, person. To nut it out, show, yeah. I've got him on the phone. Murray, how are you, mate? How are we, boys? Very mate. good, and congrats, first of all. Um, we didn't watch the store gift this year, mm. but you did win, we take it. 
Yes, yeah, you got the result done, and um, yeah, you you would have been better off watching at home because it was uh, pretty poor weather down there. Yeah, it was awful weekend. weather. It was yep. awful weather this year. Hey, Andy, Murray. going for a partial point on knowing the weather, <laughs> <laughs> even though he didn't know who won. <laughs> well, I'm chalking that one into my wet track form for the uh, for the potential race. How are you over 800, Murray? Look, it's a very different sport, isn't it? It's a, it's a long way from 100, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, seven, you, yeah. if you're trying to pretend that you can <laughs> win, win Australia's richest foot race over 120 metres, but then somehow you're an asthmatic, fat old dude over 800 metres, I'm not buying it, Goodwin. <laughs> you're obviously a fit man. <laughs> it's not like you just, you've got an explosive three steps and that carries you 120 metres and then you puff. Just breathe still after 100, yeah. <laughs> and Murray, if it's not a personal question, I mean, it's not because we can Google it, how much do you win for the store gift uh the store gifts 40,000 at the moment yeah and that and for the uh men and the women uh this year 40,000 dollars of course that's yeah, good bit of pay equality finally um yes. w- w- we've taken it one step further and we're allowing men and women to, to, run, to, together. to run to run together okay hey i'd love to see him in you're in yeah, i i'd right. love to see Murray, you in. i'd love to see you in too mate <laughs> i just now do you have a do you have a horse suit i will obtain a horse suit or a mascot uh, suit yep. very very quickly i think i'd like you to err on the side of getting a heavier suit Murray, <laughs> just to make it slightly fairer if that's possible or Murray, can i ask, could i say this would you gaffer tape real horse shoes to your feet <laughs> <laughs> oh, boys, the opportunities could be endless here. <laughs> All right, what about this? Gaffer tape horseshoes to your calves so you don't have to run on them, but you've got the weight of a horseshoe. That would just hurt, babe. That would just hurt. I'm trying to handicap him a bit, mate. He's, he's a, I he, think, uh, Murray, again, are you a to... chance to go to the Olympics? Uh, oh, mate, I think every every athlete thinks they're a chance, but um, hey, yeah. We've got the natural handicap. He's on his way to Rio. Of two two man suits versus one man suits with the natural handicapping there. Um, I, I still think that... Right, I'm leaving this case open. Okay. TBC, Murray, you're in. You're running. I'm going to get to you on the day. You've got to accept any handicap I give you. <laughs> <laughs> I, might, I might make you drink five litres of milk or something before the race. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much, Murray. Cheers, All right, mate. All right, Thank great. Oh, 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 and yeah. I, I forgot to tell you his name, too. Um... The horse's name is Hoof Hearted. Ah, oh, yes. Yes, I've heard that one before. Very good. <laughs> yeah. Very good when said fast by the race caller. <laughs> Hoof Hearted. <laughs> um, uh, thank you very much for being with us today. Uh, HamishDaddy.com for anything you may have missed. We'll try and close off the registration tomorrow, and if not, fix it up by Monday. Oh, we'll Ham. have them locked off tomorrow, and uh, tomorrow we've got Little